ladies and gentlemen, we are thrilled to have you here for this epic debate as we have a very special one today. You could say the Super Bowl of Modern Day Debate. And by the way, Modern Day Debate is a nonpartisan channel as we attempt to host debates on science, religion, and politics in the fairest way possible. So hold us accountable, folks. And with that, very excited to let you know we have a special one today as we welcome all four of our guests. I want to say thanks, Eric Stryker and Alsup, regular buddies. Thanks so much for being here, gentlemen. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Okay, Absolutely. Good. And Vosh and Destiny, setting things aside and partnering for this unique event. Thank you both, Vosh and Destiny, for being here today. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Just buddies. Happy to have you. Happy to be here. Absolutely. And with that, want to let you know, folks, I have linked all four of the speakers in the description. So if you'd like to hear more, you can hear more. And also want to let you know, for today, it's a fairly flexible format. So we're going to have roughly 12 minutes split by each team. And after that, we'll have open conversation for 60 minutes, followed by about 30 minutes of Q&A. Because we do want to let these guys get to sleep by a decent time. I am sorry to say that because we probably will have a lot of Super Chats tonight, Super chat at your own risk. I'm sorry to say that, but we probably almost certainly won't get to all of them. And some of them, we, we you could say we're going to be kind of picky with looking for the best questions we can. And just to give you that heads up up front. So with that, want to let you know, we are very excited as Eric and also, or I should say Eric and James will be kicking it off first. And they're going to have, as I mentioned, that split opening. And then we're going to have open conversation closings and Q&A. If you have a question, fire it into the old live chat. And if you tag me with at Modern Day Debate, it makes it easier for me to see it. And Super Chats will push your question to the top of the list for the Q&A. With that, thank you so much. The floor is all yours, Eric and James. Yeah, well, thanks for uh, that great introduction. And thanks for having us again. Uh, race Two is... Seconds. So sorry. <laughs> this is my mistake. I do. This is really special. Forgive me for doing this. I forgot to mention, we have a very special video. Someone wanted to wish the debaters luck. And so I do want to show this. My mistake. I jumped the gun there. I'm very excited for this one. But I do have to show this because it's a, a face you may recognize. So let me just show this clip for all of our speakers. Thank you. And uh, another welcome from a special guest. With that, I want to say thanks so much, Hunter, for that wish of good luck for Thank all you, four of the speakers. And with that, we will kick it over, as said, to Eric and James. Thanks for being here. Yeah, of course. And uh, yeah, good. always good to see from Hunter Avalon. Uh, our, our, I think I can speak for all four of us when I say definitely our favorite favorite YouTuber. Um, but yeah, race is is probably the most pertinent discussion we could be having right now. One of the most pertinent discussions with cities on fire white monuments being toppled, white people being attacked in the streets for defending said monuments and being criminally charged for defending themselves. Um, but what's been made clear in America over the past few weeks, especially, this is something that's been playing out since the country's founding, of course, but what's been made uh, especially clear as of late is that diversity is not working. Diversity is a failed experiment. A racial egalitarianism is a failed experiment. And it's not working for, for whites who are being disenfranchised, we're being subjected to physical violence, over-policed, pushed out of positions of power, uh, whiteness being effectively criminalized in many ways, uh, the, white, the, the right of whites to self-defense effectively being criminalized in many ways. But it's not working for blacks either. And to say that, that it's working 100% for one group or the other, uh, that is, it's not true. I mean, there are some legitimate grievances, and we can, we can quibble with uh, the particulars of these. But uh, blacks that feel that they, uh, they, they rightly feel that the system, despite everything it's giving them in terms of uh, advancement, affirmative action programs, so on and so forth, it, it isn't for them. It feels alien. They don't like being governed uh, under a system that they correctly identify as being of European origin. So nobody's really getting what they want from this. The only interest being served from diversity uh, is from, from forcing these incompatible, largely incompatible groups together, the only interest being served is that of global capital, that of the elites. Uh, this is making, making class solidarity impossible. Uh, diversity is being used effectively as a wrecking ball to destroy the last vestiges of normal, healthy American society. That is part of the case we're going to make today. We are going to, of course, talk about crime and uh, race and crime, the, the causes of crime and 
and all of the above. But that is, I think, the general meta point that people need to take home is that diversity is not working for blacks. It is not working for whites. The only interest being served is that of global capital. And with that, I'll hand it over to Eric Stryker. Okay, great to be here, everyone. Uh, let me start off by expressing disappointment in the fact that instead of having a conversation about race with two blacks, we're having a conversation about it with two white men who have appointed themselves spokesmen of the black race. What does the average black man on the street even think of two gay white liberals deciding the fate of their communities for them? According to Vosh, we wanted to debate blacks because black people are dumb and it would be an easy win for us. But I've had incredibly fruitful conversations with various members of the black community, from Congresswoman Cynthia McKinney to members of the Nation of Islam, the black hoteps. What was remarkable about, about all these conversations is that I saw almost eye to eye with them on everything. One important view I share with black leaders, from Muhammad Ali to Malcolm X to Louis Farrakhan, even Van Jones, is the hatred of you disingenuous white liberal scum. As Van Jones said, the white liberal is a bigger enemy to the black race than any Klansman. Muhammad Ali mocked a British TV announcer as a self-hating weirdo in an interview because he said he wanted the races to mix. Malcolm X accurately stated that Jews and liberals are cynics who pretend to be friends of the Negro in order to use them to increase their own power. I can find videos of Malcolm X praising George Lincoln Rockwell. Can you name any black who has ever said anything good about a white liberal? Sure, they'll fleece them for money, but blacks love the treason and hate the white traitor. Good for them. The only systematic racism in America is against white people. In today's America, between one in five and one in four blacks, a significant overrepresentation works for the public sector, a place that provides reliable middle class jobs with health care, paid vacations, and other benefits. Public sector, uh, public sector workers are unionized at a rate of 35% compared to private sector unions, which are 6%. The typical public sector worker gets 22% higher wages than their private sector equivalents. On the other hand, white people are 77% of minimum wage employees, another massive overrepresentation. These are the shitty jobs with no health care, no labor rights, and always dead ends. White overrepresentation among the working people is by design. A study released last year in the Journal of Experimental Psychology by Aaron Cooley found that when people are given white privilege training, they're far less, far less likely to empathize with the white working poor, while their sympathies increase for blacks. Is it any wonder why fake socialists who promote shit, white privilege bullshit like Vosh <laughs> love to make fun of rednecks and hicks for their low status? Is it any wonder why all the bankers and capitalists are promoting white privilege bullshit? This is an ideology for oppressing white workers. It's no surprise that once again, capitalist Goldman Sachs simp Destiny and communist Vosh are fighting on the same side against the white working people and the West. James and I will proudly take a stand for our folk and for the pride of European civilization. As for the police, I got no love for the blue. I remember Daniel Shaver being executed as he pled for his life. No fucking congressional hearings there. I remember that murdering pig is walking the streets drawing a taxpayer-funded pension. I remember Jeremy Martis, a six-year-old boy shot to death by two fucking black pigs. He's now, one of them is now free. It later came out that one of the black men that shot this little boy targeted his father for assassination because he wanted to fuck his wife. So give me a goddamn break about this systematic racist bullshit. The entire system is anti-white. That's my piece. Okay. Um, Destiny, do you mind if I uh, go first? Yeah, knock yourself out. Yeah. All right, well, that was a fantastic piece of performance art. I would like to remind the two people I am debating that the subject we are debating is, in fact, racism in the criminal justice system. The statement we were asked to provide was this. All else equal, African-American uh, people are treated worse by the criminal justice system for no discernible reasons, not directly, or at least indirectly, influenced by racism or race-based policies. And I had wondered, coming into this, with the totality of evidence on our side, what approach you would take towards rebutting those arguments. And it is clear to me now that theater 
as I had anticipated, is indeed the approach you will be taking because you did not say shit about the actual subject of discussion. Instead, it was the same vague, performative, conspiratorial nonsense you could read off any poll post. So let me actually bring some data into this conversation. The evidence in favor of the idea that black people are discriminated against in the criminal justice system is overwhelming. It is uniformly uh, reified not only by private um, uh, academics, but also by government institutions, from the FBI to the uh, Bureau of Justice Statistics, um, that in every level of our criminal justice system, black people are treated disproportionately poorly. And to that, the common response is this. Well, black people may get shafted in this way and that way. However, they do more crime. <laughs> so, in all actuality, they're being treated fairly. No. These studies account for every conceivable socioeconomic confound that is typically used as a means of obfuscating the truth of the matter. We have evidence that black people are, with all other factors apart from race meaningfully accounted for, infinitely more likely to be stopped by uh, stop and frisk procedures, more likely to be stopped by police while driving, more likely to be hit with harsher sentences, particularly with regards to mandatory minimums, more likely to be sentenced to the death penalty. Uh, I mean, I could read out all of the studies I'm looking at right now, but I imagine we'll have time to go through them one by one. That is the subject I am interested in discussing, not some vague conspiratorial bullshit over whether or not people taking down statues of Confederates means this country is anti-white. And uh, to you, Destiny. Um, yeah, wow, I didn't know we were doing theater intros to this, but um, I would like to point out that I think it's very funny that on one end we have Alsup, who is saying diversity is not working for the country that is literally the head of the world right now, both economically and militarily. Um, and then another guy who has deluded himself into thinking he's European, I guess. Um, but yeah, I mean, narrowing the focus of this conversation onto the criminal justice system and focusing how blacks are disproportionately impacted by said criminal justice system is the reason why me and Vash are here today. Uh, I hope that we don't spend the majority of this debate pandering to these random stupid talking points about how blacks are different in some other area that's completely, totally unrelated to this discussion. You got it. And with that, we will go into the open discussion. So thank you, gentlemen, for being here. And I'll be just to let you know up front, I'll probably be more active just because I expect this might be a little bit, a little bit wild. But the floor is all yours. I'm feeling sure. Calm. Well, I, I'd like to, I'd like to begin by addressing uh, this idea that there is a multitude of studies showing that blacks are, um, as Vouch put it, infinitely more likely to be stopped and frisked. Which, uh, of course, begs the question: Well, why would that be? Is this just the the predilections of racist police officers that are stopping and frisking blacks for for no reason other than? evil white racism, or is, is there a, a factual basis uh, for why uh, some groups may be more likely to commit crimes, thus more, more appropriate targets for a stop and frisk policy, uh, for example? Let me um, add something to that, too. Under Mayor Bloomberg, whites were twice as likely to be stopped and frisked as uh, proportional to the violent crime they commit. Blacks are wildly overrepresented in all crimes in New York City, and yet whites were twice as likely under Bloomberg. Bloomberg laughed about this on the radio, by the way. And that right. was specifically and so, done to create an equalist outcome. And right. And so you, it's one thing to say to compare the, the percentage of the population to the percentage of those that are stopped and frisked. But you can look at actually those that are arrested and, and convicted of murder and, uh, and the rate of stop and frisk for, for people such as that, um, or, or for blacks in that case, um, the rate of blacks arrested for murder versus the rate at which they are stopped and frisked. And it is disproportionately against whites. Whites are disproportionately stopped. Uh, relative to the percent of violent crimes they commit. Um, I'd like to begin, if we're going to talk about studies, we can talk about a study from Just Washington sure State University. We don't have too many points. Yeah, yeah, can we do these one at a time? I'd like yeah, to, let's... because I know that the goal is to like put out as much stupid shit as possible. Um, the first thing that you brought up, the idea that like, um, so a common tactic is to say like weasel words, like, well, blacks commit way more crime than whites. And then, you know, you know, whites don't commit as much crime as like, instead of actually like looking at the actual figures. So for instance, if we were to say that like, there is a good reason for black people to be pulled over more than white people, then you'd expect to see that those pullovers are actually like accomplishing the goal of like finding more crime. Um, this just doesn't seem to be the case though. Um, so for instance, um, an analysis of four and a half million Million traffic stops in North Carolina um, shows that black and Latino drivers are more likely to be searched than whites, okay, given the population. However, despite that, 
there are still more profitable searches turning up white motorists having contraband. Um, and then this study has been repeated in Nashville as well, where even if you look at the amount of stops, even if you look at the fact that, well, they commit more crime, whatever the fuck that means, when you actually analyze like, well, how likely are they to turn up contraband or to catch somebody for a crime, they actually aren't being able to justify these stops with these numbers. It's one of the reasons why stop and frisk has been phased out so largely in New York. It's just not good policing. Even if we throw all the social justice, whatever aside and all the feel good or whatever, if we just look at the raw data, stop and frisk is just not a good way to catch crime. Um, and then this, this idea that you can say, well, maybe there's a reason, maybe it's because they think they're more likely to commit blah, blah, blah. What you're doing is you're justifying racism. You're basically saying, well, maybe- I, I got the 2019 black- studies here for uh, the, the crime rate. Uh, okay, I, we're not talking about the same. Nothing York to do with what we're talking about. Ninety-three percent of all murders in New York City were committed by blacks. This is you're, 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 you're getting excited, Stryker. That has so nothing like, to do with what we're talking about. Eighty-six percent of rapes were committed by One blacks sec. and, and uh, people. Okay, call okay. Us forgive me for doing this. I hate doing this so early. I got you all on mute. Forgive me for doing this so early, but just to we come back to you. I promise, Stryker. But just because there were a lot of points that I know Destiny wants to get a chance to address as many as possible. Promise we'll come back to you, but want to kick it back to Destiny. Yeah, okay. Um, I, I'm, he'll use his European data to catch back up, I'm sure, um, or his U- European DNA. So the, the thing that I'm trying to focus on is that the idea that even if black people do commit more crime, that doesn't justify the increased number of stops. Um, you know, We can hide behind this idea that black people commit more crime all day. Neither me nor Vosh are going to dispute that. That's obviously true, but that's not a slam dunk. The, the point is whether or not the total amount of like extra stops that black people receive compared to white people can be justified based on the extra amount of crime they do, and that's just not borne out anywhere. Um, you know, Again, we can always you know talk about the high com- crime that blacks commit or whatever, but it just doesn't explain the massive disproportionate amount of stops that black people receive compared to white people, and they don't have the numbers to justify it. Yeah, uh, I, I'd like to add to that. It's very often the prerogative of these types to just, no matter what evidence you present to them, they lean back in their chair, put their finger to their chin, say, well, 1350. We understand that there is a disproportionate rate of criminality um, between the races here in this country. What we are arguing is that the uh, judicial response, the criminal justice system's response to this um, imbalance is disproportionate to the extent of constituting racial bias. If it, the bias is not explained by the crime statistics, then those biases are unjustified and therefore, by definition, racial biases of the system, hence systemic racial bias. We can All kick right, so, in. I know that I think Eric, you had a point you wanted to get to. Yeah. Well, if 96% of shootings in New York City are committed by blacks and, and Puerto Ricans and Dominicans, uh, it actually makes absolute sense to check more of those people for guns. I mean, it's, it's just common sense. Furthermore, you don't interact at all with the fact that whites, who, again, are marginal in the terms of representation in crime in New York City, are twice as likely, because uh, in comparison to their crime rate, two times as likely, Bloomberg said this, he admitted this when he was mayor, uh, to be stop and frisked just so that they can even out the numbers. So if there's any institutional racism there, it's against whites. Yeah, and you could even argue that the problem with stop and frisk was that it wasn't stopping enough uh, black people and, and enough, and enough uh, Hispanics and Dominicans, et cetera, because if you're looking to catch people with illegal guns in New York City and you have 96% of shootings being committed by, by blacks and, and Dominicans and others, then it, it bears to reason then that a, an appropriate response from the criminal justice system would be to, to uh, 96% of people selected for random stops would be those that are doing the shooting. But moreover, we can, we can understand why blacks might feel uncomfortable with that. Why, you know, these are uncomfortable realities for African-Americans to experience that they are more likely to uh, perhaps encounter, have police encounters because they're committing more crime. Uh, they're more likely to be sentenced more harshly because they're more likely to have prior convictions, right? So all of these go. things lead to them feeling uncomfortable. That said, these this is a system, a, a criminal justice system that was created by people of European descent, by white Americans to police white Americans. I just so found their you- North Carolina study, just real quick. I found their North Carolina study, and it's, it did say that the contraband difference was 32% on whites, 29% for blacks. What that study didn't include, of course, typical dishonesty, is that the blacks had warrants and the searches there are mandatory. Right, so and, that's, and the, that's the other thing is when you talk about when you talk about these studies, if you if you know wait, about how these work, what will happen is they have a lot of points. So just well, to, to can, let can, you know, can I just give a, a address the, the 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 stops? Just one piece of uh, fact about that, and it's not a new point. But when a police officer engages in a stop, they will run the license plate, and what happens then is is dispatch will will tell them who the driver is, who the registered owner is, and uh, whether or not they have warrants. In many cases, the, this then necessitates 
uh, an arrest if there's an outstanding warrant. And we know that uh, what is the number like one in one in five black men will spend time in prison in this country. Uh, blacks have uh, tend to have more warrants than whites do. So thus, oh. you would expect to see a higher rate of stop and a higher rate of search. Uh, maybe not as maybe not as much contraband. But even then, three percent difference we're within the margin of error. Because they skip it back over. Let's kick it back over just because there's a lot of points. Just to, yeah, for a lot, people. and very few of them are relevant. So first of all, I take a, I took a look at the 2019 New York City uh, shootings by race statistics that you just cited, and it seems like from what I'm looking at, the arrest rates correspond proportionally almost exactly to the, um, the, the rate of uh, victim and suspect, meaning that at least in the case of shootings in this city during this year, there seems to be a relatively proportional rate of arrest to crimes committed. I don't know how exactly this is evidence of some sort of anti-white bias. In fact, I don't know how this is relevant at all to what we were talking about. Um, but yeah, additionally, with regards to the pullover uh, study that you just looked at, you accused um, us of dishonesty for not mentioning the fact that warrants were a part. Of course, warrants are a part of decision making with regards to searching vehicles that are pulled over. But the fact that there are more warrants proportionally on black people is in support of our argument because less black people proportionally had contraband in their cars meaning that um the uh, even with the distortion that you allege by the way i don't know if you're aware of the extent to which that actually influenced the available data um there was still a disproportionate rate of um searches to contraband found uh, right. Destiny, was there anything in particular you wanted to jump to? Yeah, I guess one of the really disappointing things about these conversations, and I already see where it's going to go, is that typically if you don't have an, a, an actual like data set to back up your argument, we start like reaching to random data. So for instance, if the, for the specific question of, and, and it's funny because you're even centering on New York City, like this is your slam dunk argument. So what I would expect to see from you guys if stop and frisk was effective is some sort of data showing that, oh, well, once police implemented stop and frisk, either number of violent homicides by, by uh, firearm decreased, or once they implemented stop and frisk, um, they were able to procure far more firearms than were before. Um, there's a reason why you guys don't have that data. It's because you know this is a bullshit argument. You know, you can vaguely mention the crime rates of black people in New York City, um, but that's not really supporting any argument whatsoever. Um, if you want to defend stop and frisk, I mean, I would be, I would love to see some data that points to stop and frisk being a, a good program. You know, initially I was more sympathetic towards it because yeah, black people commit more crime. Maybe it makes more step, step, uh, sense to pull them over in some areas. But one of the big reasons why stop and frisk just kind of fell out of favor is because it just didn't work that well. It just didn't really turn up that many more firearms in New York City. Uh, well, I, one I point, can, one one okay. very important point I need to make about the about the warrants and and people being pulled over is um, when someone is pulled over and they have a warrant, this will necessitate an arrest. In, in almost every case, this will necessitate an arrest, which then necessitates a search. So let's say we have two examples, right? We have a, a black person being pulled over who has a warrant and a white person being pulled over whose car smells of marijuana. Now, the white person who's being pulled over whose car smells of marijuana. This will, this will be a reason for a search. A police officer will search their vehicle, and then t contraband will turn up. Now, every black person with a warrant is not driving around with contraband. So the idea that they're being arrested for the contraband, this is a, this is a misrepresentation of the data. Now, again, it actually is shocking that 29% of, of searches of uh, black drivers turned up contraband because many of these were not predicated. The probable cause for the search was not uh, identifiable, identifiable smell of drugs or uh, visible drug paraphernalia. These are all probable causes. Uh, these were these were warrants. Do you have any so Wait, do you have any data on how many of those searches were initiated by warrants? Do wait, you? Let me, let me, wait, we, no, I don't. But I'm not making the claim. No, but we we do have the data available that there are more outstanding warrants, or there's a disproportionate amount of outstanding warrants right. for African Americans. Than for I mean, that's I'm sorry. Regarding you this data court. set, did you just imagine a correlative factor that you imagine disproves the data, or do you <laughs> actually have any evidence? Are you are you really going to say let, that in let, North let Carolina actually, there's not a disproportionate amount? Let, of let, me, let me check Destiny over, over here because Destiny just straight up lied, oh. lied about stop and frisk. Like this is what he yeah, does. What did I straight up lie about? Confidently lies. So we got the data here from New York City. The homicide rate before mm -hmm. stop and frisk homicide rate was 31 per 100,000 in 1991 uh, after Giuliani implemented broken windows policing and stop and frisk. I mean, this is something that everyone knows that New York used to be more dangerous. Yeah, I love about. the fact that Hold you're on, citing the finish. highest crime rate finish. in U.S. history in 91. Mute, mute him, James. Mute, we'll we'll him, come right, we'll come right mute him. Mute him. Mute him. Mute him because he always does this when he's losing. Hey. So. Don't be here's so mad. 19, okay? Here's the nineteen. Here's the nineteen ninety one. Nineteen ninety one. Thirty one homicides per hundred thousand. Two thousand thirteen. That was Bloomberg's last year's mayor with Sob and Frisk. Three point three per hundred thousand homicides. Okay, that's a massive drop. Okay, from fucking 
31 homicides per 100,000 to 3.3 per 100,000. That's post and af- that, that's uh, before and after stop and frisk. So that's you just lie. Do you have evidence that's because of broken windows policing policy, oh, or does that correlate to a general downward trend of violent crime across the country? Well, uh, no, uh, yeah, even across the world. Like, the 90s were the most violent point in all of U.S. history. Yeah. Like, I could literally point to any spurious correlation that I want and say, well, the reason actually was New because York I was born in 88, and I was, like, the savior of the U.S., and everybody looked to me and, and stopped committing violent crime. You know, you can see three years after my birth that happened. Um, you, notice how, you notice how the older I get, the less violent crime there is in America? I don't know. I think I'm is starting to have an influence. that correlation that we should be concerned well, about? Yeah, we can, we can be silly, or we can look at the, the nationwide we rate, the the decrease in yeah. crime. And I think the nationwide decrease in crime, and correct me if I'm wrong, but this was around 30% or a 30 to 40% drop in violent crime nationwide, uh, which, is, which is superseded by that 90% drop that Stryker just pointed out. So, uh, yeah, we, we do have evidence so here. So you're looking that, at an outlier. 1991 New York City was literally, like, have you seen uh, Escape from New well, York? Well, that's like what, Snake what Destiny Bliskin? questioned me on. That's what Destiny... Yeah, well, but that's, actually, no, he I was think, talking think, about evidence did, for broken windows policing in general. Did the homicide in New York City drop? The answer is yes. Nobody okay, contested that it stop dropped. Stop and frisk. Wait, have now, you done research for any now, conversation nation, ever? Nationwide, <laughs> nation, nationwide uh, uh, falls in crime is, frankly, the criminal justice bill that's always talked about. You know, Trump is always attacking Biden for supporting the criminal justice bill where Hillary Clinton and the Democrats call uh, Hillary Clinton called blacks uh, predators and so on. They, they basically just put all these black people in prison. That's why the crime rate went down. We're pivoting a little bit you here. You want to let them out, okay? That's another reason why the crime rate nationwide went down. Okay. They just put all black people in prison. Slight pivot. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Anyway. Yeah, so as we were saying, New York City in 1991 was about as much of an outlier as you can possibly get when it comes to the murder rate in this country. So to take that one specific country and then all of the dozens and dozens of policies that it's implemented over the past few decades to mitigate that crime rate and go like, oh, well, broken windows policing, in spite of the fact that there was a gigantic nationwide drop in violent crime and broken windows policing has been implemented in other countries, and uh, not countries, sorry, in other cities and has not been found to have those same positive effects, really doesn't speak to the strength of your argument right there. Well, I would argue actually, that New York City was in a uniquely bad place and it fixed itself in a number of ways. Some of those ways were more effective than others. And none of those ways, just because you're saying so, involved stop and frisk or broken windows policing. All right. None of it it, it had anything to do... The the fall in crime in New York City had nothing to do with the police or a change of police tactics. That's what they're saying. No, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. You should demonstrate that. Demonstrate that. Can somebody here find that clip? We can. If I can finish this, we can. We can demonstrate and look to the nationwide decrease in violent crime compared to New York's decrease in violent crime. What was happening nationwide? There was no nationwide stop and frisk. What was New York doing? They were taking violent crime very seriously. They were profiling accurately, relatively accurately, those that were likely to commit the violent crime. And so the crime rate went down. The homicide rate went down. I don't know. And, and you're saying that New York fixed itself. I mean, come on. <laughs> you you yeah. want to demand evidence for, do Magically we have evidence cool. for, for, for uh, stop and frisk having any effect? Well, this is one of the most preeminent policies pursued in New York. And it led to, to a decrease in violent crime that beat the national average. So that seems to be compelling evidence right there. Right. Well, here's, if it was, then oh, you should sorry. have a study for it. Oh, like, that's so easy. Like, if you're going to say that, like, oh, well, stop and frisk definitely led to a decrease in violent crime. Why are you comparing the no, stats no. for you in the chat? Not, I mean, hold on. So let's we're, hear we're, from Destiny. Yeah. So we're past freshman level of high school in terms of arguing where you can just throw a stat out, right? Like, generally, when people do studies, they will do a comprehensive analysis of all the tactics implemented by a certain department. They might go county by county. They might have control cities that they'll compare New York City to to look at a variety of different uh, policies to see how they impacted the crime. Not just like, well, here's one stat and it went down dummy i'm right like come on like this, yeah, like, is, this, this is, is the easiest part of the conversation literally correlation causation conflation right here but i found a study i'll help you out a little bit so here's a study on um uh factors which can be attributed to the decrease in crime over the 1990s and there's a segment for factors which do not seem to decrease to uh the uh um criminal rate in this country entitled better policing strategies it ends with Thus, while the impact of policing strategies on crime is an issue in which reasonable people might disagree on given the lack of hard evidence, my reading of the limited data um, that are available leads me to the conclusion that the impact of policing strategies on New York City are exaggerated and that the impact on national crime is likely to be minor. So this is a meta-analysis of existing studies that are done to the decrease in crime over the 1990s. I can link it in chat if you'd yeah, like. Yeah, I, I really enjoy this uh, this bit of like, uh, you know, freshman level um, going on JSTOR and like finding type Better than studies. having no data also. Well, well, we well, do have the, the data. data. No. One sec. The crime we, rate we, went I mean, down. The idea that, I mean, the idea that, ridiculous. yeah, the crime went down. We have a multitude of statistics which we've presented 
And then to say, oh, well, no, 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 uh, because, you know, that's not on JSTOR so well, actually. Also, you have stats, not analysis. Well, There's a difference. A stats let me, out of context mean nothing. Let me, let me get in on here. Right Listen, the, the, the murder rates in places like Baltimore and St. Louis and places that don't have New York City style stop and frisk, the murder rates there are, are atrocious. Chicago, the south side of Chicago, places like that. So there's a massive gulf. Are you going to literally deny? Do you have any data on New this? York City? New York City is the most safe, one of the most safe big cities in America, if not the safest. This is common knowledge. It's Sunday after Saturday style common knowledge. And if we have to sit here and, and debate that, then it's just ridiculous. The crime, the, the homicide rate went down drastically after stop and frisk. But let's let's pretend for a second. Let's pretend for a second. Because what I what I was really the reason I wanted to talk to black people instead of two disingenuous white liberals. Can we get to the relevant points? Can, yeah, we can, can we actually can hurry up? Can we not do this? We, I don't we, wanna... we can. No, no, I'm going to fucking do it. Uh, oh, He's going to do reason, it. The reason the reason why is that I want to talk. So it's calming for him because I'm willing. I'm willing to accept that black people may perceive that a white cop or a white judge or a white jury may discriminate against them. And you right. know what? There, there might be cases like that. I'm not saying there's not. The point is what I'm saying is what is the solution to that now are you conceding the argument excuse me that's cool no he, so what you he's, agree what that saying, there is criminal justice what he's saying is that there may be a perception no, no, no. I said in the I'm, opening I'm, is that there I'm may be speaking... a perception among blacks there may be a perception yes. among blacks ah. they're being treated unfairly right. because they, they they look at a white judge and they look at a white prosecutor and say well you know one plus one equals two that i'm going to jail not because you know, I, I smothered that toddler like Reese Bowman was was uh, you know, eight month old who was smothered. You by a black make caretaker. fun of that oh, line of me, thought. Wait, you make me, fun of that finish. line of thought, but that's unironically no, what you're old. doing. Well, let's let get me, back to the main point. Yeah, can, we'll I, can I finish? Back. Just finish the sentence. Yeah, about black is, people. Is it, right, is that they may have a perception they're being treated unfairly, but that's not the case. So, the problem that presents itself to us is how do we address this nationwide problem where where 15 percent of the population or so feels like they can never get a fair shake in the system. Can we, can we even build a system where everyone is governed by the same laws and criminal justice system? What Stryker and I will argue is that no, is that, that diversity and integration is not working because you will always have the, these perceptions of unfairness as, as wrong as they may be, statistically wrong as they may be. So what do we do with that? Well, okay, the first so thing we have to do is we have, real quick. I'm sorry, just real quick. Go you go. The first thing we have to do is we have to figure out the, the, the first step to solving any problem that you learn at any stage in your life is to identify the problem. So if they have a perception that they're being untreated or that they're being treated unfairly, but they're not actually being treated unfairly, well, then the solution is going to be a hell of a lot different than they if, if they are actually being treated unfairly. So I don't know why we're trying to skip over that part of determining descriptively whether they are or are not being treated unfairly. I think that's really important before we move on to some weird conversation about black people not being able to live alongside white people or something. Um, I think it's good to identify whether or not they are being treated unfairly first. Um, so just curious, so if we're just going to do the, the stats game or whatever, because we don't actually know the difference between citing one or two numbers versus an actual study done by educated people in the field, um, I've linked something in the Zoom group chat. So you can see that the biggest fall or decline in murder rate right after 2009 is actually coinciding with a huge fall in stop and frisk. And that the massive rise in stop and frisk from the early 2000s didn't really seem like it was correlated with the decrease in violent crime. Um, can you explain here if stop and frisk is supposed to be lowering violent crime, why these numbers would be like anti-corollary like this? Yes. Oh, I'd like I to can. add to that really quickly, if I may. And it would be very much appreciated if you would actually stick to the point and not go to the weird ancillary conspiracy bullshit about white civilization. Um, I don't know why you're making fun of your perceived belief of how black people perceive the criminal justice system. You're making fun of them for what you consider to be an intuitive judgment when all you've been giving us is intuitive judgment. Well, I'm look at Baltimore. Thank you for look clarifying at, the black point of view. Look, look, at the, look at these cities. There's crime there. There's black people. What more do you need to know? It's common sense. It's not surprising to me that you bulk when provided actual studies from actual people who actually have the education to analyze data. Can explain the, the drop in crime rate in, in New York City. I can I, I can explain that. Can I explain it? Explain okay. the data that was just provided to you uh, by Destiny. I'm gonna explain the data real quick. Black okay. people are leaving New York City because they're getting priced out. The black population <laughs> in the last decade has dropped by 23. <laughs> percent do, do, Does that make sense to you? They're just leaving. They're moving to other states. So I like how rate. we've moved completely from stop and frisk to well, now it's because they're leaving. This is why studies are important, no, guys. Instead of just looking at like one or two numbers, because now if we say, well, actually, it didn't it. drop. Exactly. It didn't drop as the same percentage. You're going to throw up another one. Well, actually, um, that was when BETV stopped showing like as much violent program. Well, have actually, been, that was because of blah blah blah. Have like, you been to Have need, you been to Harlem lately? This is why we need. It's it, wait, white people wait, now. Why did you just lie, Striker? In 1990, the black population in New York City was 98.7 percent. In 2010, it's 25.5 percent. That's a three percentage point drop. You're saying well, that's going to account for the massive? I will massive? link you, I will give... link you uh, uh, a demographic study from a black 
website. I don't you care. I don't care Why? where it comes from. Oh, you don't from. care about it? Okay. No, it I just care about how accurate black the data is. Are you suggesting blacks right. don't have the authority to speak in these topics? I yeah. think the person who has the best idea should have the authority. Liberals, hey, listen. Like hey, listen. Right. As a white wait, guy. I'm sorry. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Main topic. As a as a white guy who appreciates the importance of empiricism, I would not want either of you motherfuckers speaking for me in any regard. So no, I do not think that race is actually the determining characteristic for whether or not data is correct. We don't speak for you. Yeah, and also let's be real. If you claim to speak, if you claim to speak on behalf of Europeans, I mean, we might as well be. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like, oh, real, dude. Okay. My we brother will, Destiny over here. We'll kick it over to Your, James and, and Eric and, now. And whites so in the new world. We'll give, nothing we'll give a minute or two to okay. just to be sure. Hold on, just to be sure there's order. Uh, we'll kick it over to Eric and James to give responses now. Yeah, striker. If you want to, if you want to finish in, what you're saying. Two thousand. What I was saying is that uh, the black population in New York City from 2010 to now went from 28 percent in 2010 to 22 percent. And it's key, and it keeps on dropping. Okay. Wait, from what year to what year? I actually missed that. I'm not. Uh, it's in the it's in the chat. You can look at it. Okay. Survival. I'll look at it. Um. So black people are just leaving the city because they're getting priced out. You know who's pricing them out? It's people like you and and, and Destiny who are gentrifying all these neighborhoods. That what does this have to do Harlem with Harlem is arguments. full of whites now. Harlem is full of white people. No, now he's right there. I have. I've got four homes in Harlem right now that I exclusively well, lease out to. Well, white I, I, think it, I think it is people that are you denying people. that it's important? If we're going to talk about the the amount of black crime in a city. The amount of black people isn't relevant. Is that the suggestion here? Because I think it's it act, it's actually very relevant. What would be um, relevant I mean, is you addressing that, like, the data. The problem is that like you oh, guys haven't found mad. an actual analysis. You're just throwing at random numbers. First of oh, all, I like how you start citing crime from '91, ignoring the fact that stop and frisk didn't start until like fucking 2002. Okay, so firstly, that's funny. Okay, that you go back to the most violent point in history, and then you try to draw a, a line between then and now, in times when stop and frisk wasn't even implemented. And then instead of actually like having an actual analysis by an actual educated person taking into account a lot of variables, you're just like trying to throw like two or three stats here. Like we've got like like monocausal things going on here. It's just, like so stupid. Likewise, <laughs> they're trying to use a population drop in black people in New York City from 2010 to present day as though that explains a crime change that took place from, from the 1990s. <laughs> yeah. Do you, Hi. wait, do you, wait, do you realize like you could have done some research beforehand, maybe found a couple of data points? No, oh, listen, will you listen? Listen, it's pure snark, very little said. You guys are actively and maliciously misinterpreting what I said. Stop and frisk, and broke, which is a part of broken windows policing, right? It's associated with it. Would you admit that? You will. So, Broken windows policing. I thought you said you wouldn't under, speak for me. Under, under, under Bratton <laughs> and Giuliani from 1990 to 1992, you had a Bratton. I'm sorry, uh, from 1994 to 96, uh, Bratton was the New York City Police Department uh, commissioner. So the point is that Bratton, Giuliani, and uh, Kelling were the ones that came up with the theory and implemented it in the early to mid 90s. Okay. And that's just so happens that the crime rate went down. Drastically. I'm not talking about crimes like pissing in the street and things like that. They did police that. But also crimes like the, the reason the philosophy behind it is that people that are and I'm not saying I necessarily agree with all of this, by the way. But the philosophy of broken windows policing is that if you allow fair evasion or people get drunk in public and things like that, those people are more likely to commit more violent crimes. So they lock them up ahead of time. Now, you could say that's wrong. That's right. Whatever. It dropped the crime rate. OK, it's just logic. The types of people that do that. What year are was be, this implemented? This is in the early to mid 90s. Look up Giuliani, Mayor Giuliani. I'm sure you know who that is. And uh, May, uh, Commissioner Bratton and Kelling. These were the guys what, what that policy? created broken windows policing and stop and frisk. That was implemented at the same which, time. Which broken one? windows policing is not a policy. It's, a, like an it's like a theory on how to deal with crime. I don't even know if you know. Right. What Again, this is, this is splitting hairs. And, no, and I'm asking hairs. you. Wait. That's it like is. saying, what was your favorite policy of like you. George Bush? Thank you. Say, like Thank the you. war on terrorism or the war. It's not a policy. That's like an overall okay. ideology. It, 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 is, a, it is a guiding. Yes, it is a guiding theory on policing. That is true, and it is a theory that informed the policies they implemented as mayor. Don't even bother explaining. I mean, this is, this, is, this is this is this is the reality. Parker learned something new at least. They have no arguments. By the way, 1990 New York City black population 29 percent. 2010 25 and a half. So we we see yeah an approximate. What is that? Twelve percent drop in, in the black population yeah. in uh, in those years. And from when to when? What was the decrease? Ninety to twenty ten. Ninety to twenty ten. And what was the decrease? He said thirty homicides to three. 
and that little itty bitty twelve percent drop in the black well, population. Combine that with broken windows, policing, and stop and frisk. And, and oh my start... God! You know what would be a great way to combine that with? It would be it would be done in a study. That would be well. Great. Let's 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 the term, the term for this homicide rates researcher of, of that tried to correlate all these things. The term for this that, is spurlative correlations, and which when you get a grab bag of data points that sound convincing, and you start piecing together, you put them up in your cork board. You've got your twine and your push pins, and you try to make a story out of it. All we have to do is link studies. Less likely to commit murder. Wait, wait, wait. What does that have to do with anything? Remember earlier when I said well, that all you all you types do is crime rate went down when more black people were. Remember how I said earlier that when you guys are confronted right. with data more complicated than you're capable of understanding, you lean back oh. and say, oh, "Here we go, here hmm, we go." 1350. Data hey, man. wait, really quickly. Right. Wait, wait. I want to yeah. actually get this back on track really quickly, if I may. I hope nobody minds because we've been, I guess, arguing over your inability to understand data for a little while now. We got to maybe three you of forty studies. Hold up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I agree. One we sec. are. I agree. So how about we get to the other dozens of studies I have that uniformly um, uh, inform the idea? This is time to debate white liberals. They're just cynics. Oh, uh, you're you're backing off that well, easy? Well, I mean, no. This is, this is an important this point, is... though. The idea that that data only becomes valid when packaged by someone at, at a university mm -hmm. in a certain way that agrees no, with you. No, a, a classic anti-intellectualism. Well, anti no, that's, no, that's it's, a really it's good point. James brings up. Like, yeah, but like the funny thing is that like any educated person listening to this, like the fact that you just said is an insult with standard practice. D data isn't worth anything as a single stat. Of course, these are always contextualized. The fact right, that you thought that was context, some kind of Destiny. we're giving no, the context for them. You're giving random context. data points. We're cre you're creating they, context. Hold on, context. Hold on, no. what what was there? Was hold on one sec. Just we're going to just tower. forgive me. I've got you. I'm, I've got everybody on mute. Just want to. What we'll do is change things up a bit with maybe two minutes from each side, kind of alternating back and forth, just to be sure that we keep. We've it's been going really well so far, and so it's uh at the same time bubbly. So where were we last who would who would be willing to i'd like to move to the, the conversation in a more productive direction if i may i would but i would also like to talk about this just for like one minute too because it's just very important we can split one a minute between us you want to go first <laughs> sure that sounds great okay, you go let's first do it. all right yeah okay so like you you creating context for a given stat isn't just comparing one number to another that's not creating context anybody that's ever read a single econ study a single sociology study any study like this will know that when you actually try to measure the effectiveness of a given policy there's a lot of things that go into that work so for instance you might see if other cities that are comparable in population demographics or socioeconomic status had similar or different policies you might compare the effectiveness of the policy given uh, different types of populations you might do it over like a time scale there's a lot of different things that you have to keep in mind when you're comparing policies um, between states or, or, or between like even a city and then prior in that city when you didn't have it. The idea that you think that you can just throw up one stat when I could point to like any number of other stats, for instance, like the number of prison inmates rose, um, the, the size of the police force grew, um, unemployment rate dramatically fell between 1990 and 1999, um, 25%. Um, like all of these things can be correlated with like decreases yeah, in burglary, homicides, all You're making all point. We're at I'm about 35. Anyway, go for it. Yeah, and I'll, and I'll, oh, yeah, I'll finish, okay, so I'll finish from my side, if I may. So, yeah, we can we can run this back a little bit. So, a report on jury selection showed that between 1990 and 2010, state prosecutors were about twice as likely to strike black people el eligible for juries in criminal cases as opposed to 26% of white people. It was double even after uh, taking account of other correlative factors. The authors of this study testified in court, saying the odds of this taking place with no implicit bias with regards to race were about 1 in 10 trillion. We have studies on implicit bias with regards to mock jurors. We have them in plea bargaining. We have them in charge sentencing. We have them in death penalty sentencing. The amount of data on this, for you to get knocked down in the weeds of like, well, what year was Broken Windows Policing, the, the, the policy of Broken Windows pressed. Policing implemented? No, we didn't bring up New York. Yes, that was you, you did. Guys. We, people can rewind okay, it. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll can rewind. You guys started with New York City. Yeah. Why, why, so why, so why were those black jurors struck? Hold on a second. I'd like to make a point. That was about a minute See, why? Find a study. Gentlemen, all right. Well, that was a minute 25 from Destiny Bosch. We'll give the same to Eric and James. Yeah, Stryker, just real quick. Uh, the, the reason why jurors will be struck as part of the voir dire process is prior convictions, right? And so if you have prior Accounted convictions- for. Accounted for. If you have prior convictions, then Accounted you for. will be struck. Hold on. Um, it, hold on. Sorry. No, not you, Bosch. Just oh, okay. clearing it up um, so he knows where to go. I want to hear this. Yeah, and, and also, I mean, this analysis is only, is only focusing on white jurors. Uh, I would like to see a similar study, uh, as you apparently have a wealth of them, on, on black jurors and whether or not black jurors uh, have biases towards whites. And this gets to the bigger, the bigger point here is that there may be, you may be able to, to find some whites or some blacks uh, that have implicit biases towards each other. Uh, this is not borne out in, 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 uh, the way the system treats people, for sure. Um, but I mean, the point being, uh, the idea that blacks cannot be biased against whites, um, I would uh, disagree Nobody, with that. No. 
Wait, I never mentioned the race of the One people sec. who struck still, the they've still jurors. Got 30, still got about 30 seconds. Let the European go. Yeah, you, well, here's, here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, the, the, the concept of a Bronx jury is very well known. It's uh, an implicitly and explicitly biased black jury, not to mention the fact that uh, jurors, like James said, are often struck because they have criminal records or they have some other issue going on. So, I mean, you, you, all these questions always beg the question, you know, why? Why are blacks treated slightly differently than whites? Why are they more likely to get struck from a jury? Why are they more likely to be stopped and uh, arrested? And the question and then the answer where we disagree, we both agree on the fact that blacks are more likely to commit murder. I mean, I'm sure you guys already agreed to that. So the question is then About time. Yeah. So the if question you, if is, you want to and time, I'd, I'd love to respond. So, again, that was accounted for. I never mentioned the race of the people striking the, the eligible jurors. Um, and additionally, I love the fact that whenever presented with data you're unfamiliar with, you don't know anything about this study. You don't know any of its control variables, when it was conducted, how it was conducted, the selection size, the sample rate, the, uh, the, the P hat. You don't know anything about it. But you're like, well, something has to account for that bias. It can't be racism. Maybe there were prior. Oh, wait, we accounted for priors. Maybe they smelled worse. You would go to anything. And this is the reason why we get to point to studies and you get to point to out of context data. We can points. cross reference because it is very easy. It. Are blacks more likely let's to be them, felons? Them, the answer that, is yes. Give, that's that has. Wait, wait, wait. Seconds. I think that's really important. That has literally nothing to do with, with the study jury, that I have absolutely cited. Absolutely, it does. No, that's accounted for. That's called racism. Or what, what, if you're trying to say that like a jury is more likely to be biased yeah. against a black right. person because- oh, I'm sorry, I'm missing, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I misinterpreted yeah, that. Racism. If, you're, if, you're, racism. if you're saying, well, those black jurors were more likely to have been criminals, that's accounted for. If you're saying, well, they were more likely to have been struck because the person doing the striking believes they're criminals, because that's they're literally racism you're defending. So, we agree with each other then. That's Go fine. Ahead and take yeah. it. You're yes. just pro racism and well, we're anti racism. We're yeah. not arguing over whether it exists, just whether or not it's good. Ahead. That's about a minute yeah, 20. James. So we'll kick it over to uh, James and Eric for a minute 20. Yeah. I mean, the idea, though, that, uh, that this the jur jury selection. Um, in and of itself is, is can it be <laughs> looked at to explain uh, the disproportionate sentencing? It's not um, I've got data on that too. One sec. Data. Sorry. Um, no. The idea, no, but the idea that, that the jury selection in this very specific case, where was this study conducted, by the way? Uh, let's find out. Michigan State University College of Law. Let's find the population. You can keep talking while I find the population. Yeah, sure. So, so the idea that this is is an explainer of uh, of racism in the criminal justice system. I mean, this is uh, this study actually is an outlier when you look at other studies that uh, that what, what other studies that examine. Well, I was I was I'm about to mention with Destiny, if you'd let me finish that. Uh, if, for example, study from Washington State University finds that police officers, by the way, these are the police officers that uh, that are killing unarmed black men supposedly. That police officers actually hesitate longer before shooting black suspects. Than whites. What does that uh, have to do with the jury? You get the death penalty if you. If well, do you know what a man, pivot one is? Studies. One sec. I got to give him twenty more seconds. Okay, yeah, sure. Oh, no, one, one last thing. One last thing is that Destiny already admitted that the crime rate went down because there's more cops and more people in prison. Okay, that's basically what we all agree on. The question is, why are they mostly black? The ones Wait. in prison. That had nothing to do with the data. We that well, that's, what that's what Destiny said. No, we were arguing said. whether stop and frisk was the explanation. more more cops, more people. prisoners, plus stop and frisk. In I the don't New think York he context. ever said in the New York right. context. Yeah, Chicago has give, seven times a murder rate as New York give, City. Philadelphia six times a murder rate. This has not again. Do we notice? They don't have the, stop and frisk. Do we, we notice the pattern? There. We oh. notice the pattern every time. No actual way of comparing these data points, just throwing out out-of-context data points. It's actually embarrassing. I'm cringing over here. Uh, do you want to respond to the actual data point that I cited with regards? Again, you can find it. The, um, the, the, the study writers testified under oath the likelihood of that taking place, um, those disproportionate odds, being about 1 in 10 trillion unless racism was involved. Uh, they testify that in a court of law. Of course, perjury is a crime. If you'd like to look over that and attest to that specifically, that'd be fantastic. I don't know what policing has to do with jury selection, but... I'm just quoting Destiny. Des Destiny said the crime rate went down because there's more police and more people in prison. That's what he said. So I'll agree with him two-thirds of the way there. You're I think in, New, in the New York City context, the reason it's the safest big city in America or was until very recently, until you anarchists turned it what into a fuck? jungle. You, do you want me to go to an easier study? anarchist riders. Yeah, anarchist riders. Uh, until very recently, it was the safest city in America by, to, by uh, per capita. Go to an you know, easier you study for you? Places, you. You compare it to places like Chicago. You compare it to places like Philadelphia. You compare it to places, other big cities. 
and uh, they have no stop and frisk, and the crime rate is exponent murder rate. What you think New you York City is comparable to all those other cities on racism? New York City is one of the most bodies on racism. We'll kick it over to Destiny. I'm just. The idea that you think that that's that New York City is comparable to those other cities. New York City is one of the most unique cities in the United States of America, right? That, like picking out like things particular to New York. Um, if we've seen anything, you know, with the whole coronavirus stuff, like we can see that New York City is like a pretty unique place. Um, in, in terms of like Move how that it sits in the world, I'm not moving Hold anyone. On. You haven't you haven't met the we've incredibly low bar that we've already set. Hey, Bugman, I've I lived in New York finish. City. I hey, lived, calm, I was calm born and down, start calm. Whoa, we've there, got, big boy. Got another minute. We've got what another is, minute left. Why, like. I don't know what to say. Like when you're throwing out, like I lived there. Like I went out on the streets every day and I collected unbiased apartment yeah, there's, data there, on honestly, the crime rates. And I looked at the the. There's not the even felt. there's not even anything to respond to. to yeah, be I, don't, I don't know what to say. This you, is like cheating because if they say a bunch of dumb shit for two minutes, James, and I have nothing to respond to, what what am I supposed to do with my time? Yeah, we can. Well, well, then, well, I, can how, I can I can always ready for this strategy. Address. I can throw out a new study if we want. So in this well, study, well, let's, let's tr- address my study first. Actually, what Josh. study? Let, let's address a study from Washington State University. I believe it was 2013 uh-huh. that found that police officers. You can talk about jury selection. Oh yeah, again, no, that study is right. Yeah, we can give you that one. We can give you that one, and it doesn't impact anything else. I have never we'll made the claim. I have never made the claim. This is a white on black thing. Only systemic yeah. bias against oh. black people committed it, it by might, white or black the... cops, white or black judges. Doesn't matter. And it might so, be that wait, police so... hesitate more before shooting a black person than a white person. That has nothing to do with the broader argument, though. Like that's great. That you have that one. Well, study. I'm sure it, it does. Yeah, I, it, yeah. it would, though, doesn't it? Because what you're contending is that there is a there is a nascent racism that is uh, per, that pervades the criminal justice system. And if if that were to be true, you would expect that to be pre- uh, present in the frontline enforcers of that criminal justice can I, system. Can I take a second to police. explain systemic bias? Well, also? Well, allow me to allow me to finish my point here. And this study from Washington State University found that uh, that. Um, that police officers are the most likely to hesitate 1.61 seconds before shooting a black suspect compared to 1.37 seconds for a white suspect. And that might seem like a small amount of time, but in a in a critical life or death situation, that is very important. And so again, this idea that if there were to be, if the police officers, which again, are the frontline enforcers of the criminal justice system, you claim to be racist. If they were to be, if they were to be uh, racist against blacks, for example, then they would be they would be less hesitant to shoot them, right? But they actually hesitate longer for blacks than they do with whites. Okay, so again, we never made any counterclaim on that one. It makes sense that given all of the racial antagonism surrounding the police brutality that they commit against black people, that they might be more hesitant in some instances to open fire on black people. We never made any claim counter to that, and it has nothing to do with our broader claim. Do you think it's a little bit funny that I'm like, here's a bunch of like meta analyses on broader racial injustice, and you say, well, here's one study. It takes the cop 1.2 seconds longer to kill the black <laughs> That's man. That's exactly like, what you're doing, Vash. And by yeah. the way, would that not be an example of an anti-white bias? If, if you guys want to present the argument that there is a there's an anti-black sure, bias, sure. Now just policing, demonstrate it in the entire criminal no justice evidence, system. Is evidence. We're talking about the totality of the criminal justice system right now. We're talking about a disproportionate uh, thing that black people face at every single level of of law enforcement, not just whether or not white cops are more likely to to pause when they're shooting white or black people. Police engagements, apparently. But this is. Well, no, we are talking about police engagements. Hold on. Do you think that the only type of police engagement. Well, what's Black Lives Matter about? If it's not about shooting unarmed black men, what the. We're not talking about Black Lives Matter. We're talking about systemic racial bias. Hold on. Oh, 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 oh my God. Let's, let's Hold on. on. I'm sorry. Go, go, go on. ahead. Go ahead. Stryker, call me there. I'm sorry. Um, if go you, ahead. Go if ahead. you want, either you or maybe if you've got a caretaker can check your email. You can actually go and look <laughs> at what we're supposed to be talking about. It's not Black Lives oh. Matter. Um, maybe you're in the wrong debate. I'm not sure if there was like a Daily oh. Stormer episode that you missed or something, but yeah. I mean, you they want an easier it's topic. It's so pedantic. It's so yeah, pedantic. No, it's a, wait, listen, buddy, buddy, my friend. It's pedantic. It's the point. My good, my fellow. Whoa, calm down. My fellow. Hold on one second. The discourse. My fellow European friends. Okay. We came here to talk about whether or not there is a systemic bias against black people in the American criminal justice system, and the evidence to that effect is very compelling. We acknowledge that study on cop fire uh, delay times it does not rebut our point in any way, shape, or form, and there, it's entirely possible for a criminal justice system, which is generally biased against black people, to sometimes have disproportionate outcomes against white people. For example, I believe that for the most part, we live in a pretty sexist society against women, but men get shafted in some pretty specific ways that I'm happy to acknowledge. But when I'm trying to talk about society at large, it's a little weird if we're looking at a totality of data and you keep pointing out like family courts. And that's what we're doing right now, essentially. Uh, So if we may, I'd like to move on to another study. I'm very interested in hearing how you're able to divinely talk about which uh, correlative factors they weren't able to account for in this one. In this study, 
Two groups of mock jurors were given a collection of race-neutral evidence from an armed robbery with one group's alleged perpetrator being shown to be light-skinned and the other dark-skinned. These mock jurors were significantly more likely to evaluate ambiguous race-neutral evidence against the dark-skinned suspect as incriminating and more likely to find that dark-skinned subject guilty. Now, there are no other confounding variables here. It's a study. It's an it's a experiment. There's nothing else. It's all mocked. And yet, in spite of that, the jurors, black and white, were more likely to find criminality in the actions of the alleged dark-skinned perpetrator. So the, the black people are racist against black people, too. We're talking right, about yeah. systems here. Well, are systems made up of people, or are they yeah. just well, magical I mean, even if we, even if we clouds grant in that, the sky? Even if we grant that and say, yeah, black people could be racist against white people as well. I mean, the problem right now is that white people have the predominant power in the criminal justice system, so it seems like that's the problem that we should be addressing. Where, right where are you getting? Where's be... your study to show that? Sure. Uh, and the, study for wait, that? Wait, wait, wait. Are you wait, skipping? Where's my study to show that white people are, yes. are the predominant power in... Yes. Where's I mean, study? I could do a composition of, of Congress. Show me a study. Are, are, are black people, are, are, are white people more likely to be, I don't know, the mayor of a black majority city? Uh, we don't, we don't need to sing to the bad are, faith are, arguments are white, right are white here. People, are white people the, the police chiefs in every place from Wait, St. Louis to This, this actually tracks. Yeah. You think Western Joey, civilization like, is being destroyed, so you must think no, black people are actually in charge of America. That actually yeah, makes sense I, from your I, perspective. No, no, wrong. I, let me correct you on that. You think Obama's still the shadow president? I personally have no hatred personal hatred for black people i don't and i don't think they're in charge i think jews are in charge i know that's who i think is we in know charge. Don't worry. so if you want to talk about that we can have that another another discussion about that but i, I know you'd like to move to that because it's another opportunity for you to use a bunch of oh. spurious conspiratorial claims without looking oh, at any so evidence meanwhile here you are talking about this white privilege do you want to respond sense. to the study that i have never said white privilege once in this entire discussion i want i want destiny to show me a study showing that white people are disproportionately powerful are you pivoting no are He's you actually, really? Are you avoiding? A claim and he has no evidence to back it up. Answer the question. So, what question? Do you answer want the to question, answer? Striker. What question? Striker. Why yeah, were okay. those mock jurors biased? Why? Well, your claim is that black people are racist no, against black people. No, no, nope. Our yes. claim is that jurors, whether or not they're black or white, Asian, Hispanic, engaged in bias against dark-skinned individuals. Now. In America, where you are Quantify tried by a bias. jury show of me, your peers. Show me statistics about that bias. In, yeah, show sure. me statistics yeah, here about you go. that bias. So in, well, uh, in America, we are, um, uh, uh, a, we are tried by a jury of our peers, meaning that our right. juries will be made up of black, white, Asian, Hispanic, I'm asking what you, people. what is the origin of that bias? Explain that to wait, me. Wait, wait, wait. So again, you know there's a bias. No, you're I'm just not saying, okay I'm not with it. No, hold on. I'm not admitting that. I'm saying you're saying that. All races are biased against You're justifying a racial bias right now. You're doing it. You're making I, my well, argument that, for me. Calling people, first of all, I don't give a shit if you call me racist. And second of all, it uh, makes my argument care. easier. Maybe if you racial are. biases are real. I mean, men, I, I guarantee that there are studies that show men are more likely to be frowned upon by a jury than women. Yes. Right? Yes. There's plenty of studies. Yes. So and is the, that because yeah, of systematic misandry? Bias, yes, against men in the criminal justice system. Yes, for violent crimes, oh. men are significantly more likely to be sentenced. And I've talked about that on stream and in fact so on videos. Anti, on it. anti male bias. Though. Yes. You or, that, or I guess, you? too light on women. I don't really know, but it's it's one of those things. Yeah. So, what's your solution to that? Is Wait, that to are you so you really are women? pivoting? I actually just responded to your question, and you're unwilling to address the specific thing that I just said. Are men more are likely okay? to be? Are, are juries more likely to be biased against men? Why are you men pivoting? Because men can are, are juries more likely? I'm because I'm trying. Why are you pivoting? Is, if we talk about race, you're set in your ideology. Right? Why you have a racial ideology? You don't have a canned line are for the rest of the stuff. You. So here you go. If a jury Pivoting. is more biased against black people, what were the factors like the nature of the crime, uh, the rap sheet of the black criminal, all of these? Wait, things this is an experiment. Oh, There's no, no rap no. sheet. Actually, I'm going through the thing right now, and he does bring up a good point because all of these crimes were stealing truckloads of Nikes. So Stryker actually just completely <laughs> blew us out of the water on that one. Fuck. I'm sorry. It's um, an experiment, we, we the Stryker. One. There's no other correlating factor you can like, point I don't think to. Get, understand that these aren't real life people, right? They don't. They, these does aren't, he know? Saying, what who are we talking to? That, what I'm saying also, is just, I, I, just, just like, like just like Jesse Jackson. Another reason. Hold on. You just what I'm saying is just like Jesse Jackson. Just like Jesse Jackson said once once that when he hears footsteps behind him and he turns around and sees a black man, he's a lot more scared than if he sees a what white are we, man. Who, what black are we talking about? I'm sorry, is Jesse Blacks? Jackson the secret fifth person here in this? Juries are more likely. We're talking about. James? Juries, juries, are, juries are more likely to be. Hold on a second. I'm getting a phone call here. <laughs> yes, quickly. Fine. 
Hold Take on. some time. Uh, now, we do have one. Well, I want to make a quick announcement. We have something weird. We're both computers. I can't currently access the super chats. I think I just tweeted YouTube. Uh, I don't know if this is like for everybody uh -huh. or just me, but it is on both computers. So it's also on multiple browsers. Don't worry, folks. Working on it, but just want to let you know we. Uh, so maybe we'll just go a little bit longer than expected. We in crashed terms YouTube. Of, I'm not sure what's going on. They can, I can get them to load in the creator studio, but I can't pull them up where it, you know, like has their own little, little like sub page. That's okay. We were oh, all getting a little heated. It, I'm it, happy it, to have the okay. moment. I've loved chilling, uh, taking a breath. So we are okay now. Uh, folks got to warn you, like at this point, it's going to be really hard for us to, if you're firing in a super chat now, it's going to be really, really hard for us to, to get to it based on how many we have, which looks like a lot. So I want to let you know, like super chat at your own risk. And if you guys uh, had other points that you well, wanted to get to. Yeah, and, and I would just like the, to make the point that I think we all can acknowledge that there will be among, a, if you're talking about a black person or a white person, an Asian person, any person of any race, there will be some, some built-in in-group preference there. Uh, regardless of what you're talking about, people are naturally preferential towards their own. And so if we have then a system that, that by the way, does its best. Then to... why are the black jurors also biased well, no. against? Well, if I could just, hold on, just complete. He's actually just making, completely him. making an argument for us. Yeah, go ahead and finish. And then we no, can... I'm saying that, that these people, it's natural for human beings to have some in-group preference. That is just a, a, a fact. Um, okay. So then what, how do you build a system that accommodates, that accommodates both blacks and whites, that uh, accommodates think... these two different groups? And let me finish, Destiny, because the question then is, when you mentioned having a jury of your peers, can you ever really have a jury of your peers if that jury of your peers is not of the same race of you? Right. And uh, and I think a lot of actually a lot of blacks. This is this is one of their demands is to have all black juries for black suspects. So now I, mean, I think that I think blacks, that right. is a fair demand to make, and that's a demand that a black uh, a black nationalist or or black activists would probably make, and uh, that's a demand that I think Stryker and I would would make for whites as well. And so yeah. the only way to to accomplish, if you believe it is possible to have this this system that treats all people fairly, um, regardless of of their race, is to have separate systems, to have separate courts of law, separate judicial systems, one for blacks and one for whites, and and that would then solve that would solve the problem. Black police, of, uh, black courts, black right. juries, black I believe judges black, for black, black people, people. Say, and white uh, people get the same would then rights. solve this 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 issue. And by the way, it would be very interesting then to do that same study that you keep mentioning about uh, about jury bias and so on and so you forth. Still haven't responded um, to, by the way. Well, I, I'm, I'm making the point that if you then saw blacks, uh, th this black judicial system continue to be biased against darker skinned blacks, I mean, at that point, it's like, what do we, what do you even do with that, right? If that's just, if that's What's how blacks are going to govern, so, wait, you, yeah, so wait, you've, you've think, conceded. The yeah, entire... no, I actually think that that's a really good question that James, um, the other James also brings up. I think that we should come back and we could have a second debate on how do we address the racial biases that exist inside the criminal justice system? Because also just made a huge argument that we all have in-group preferences. White people are currently, you know, make up the majority of like legislative branches uh, of district judges, judges everywhere. Um, so we've already conceded the point completely, basically, that you are, that we are well, in fact correct. Well, well, um, we well, I don't need to. No, no, I don't need to. Also just conceded your argument entirely. You just said that we all have in-group preferences. No, no, because uh, actually, wrong. we don't need to find saying, data we, to no, agree with Excuse your me, point can I you're finish wrong. my talking either, either points? Me, one sec, me. As one European second, one gentlemen, yeah, okay, as European gentlemen, okay, with great traditions from Europe, okay, we should allow each other to speak. Yeah, it's called um, America. So, um, <clears throat> I'm an American, yeah, do not call me a European. Thank you. Um, I'm like 50 50 European American, it depends on who I'm talking to at the time, but um, anyway, um, yeah, I, so if you can see that, we could come back and we can have a discussion on how should we sit here and address the problems of, of systemic racism. But if you're going to sit here and can see that systemic racism exists, then like, I don't, why don't we have that discussion oh, I, now? Well, actually, because well, we didn't I, I, prepare I for that, and I, I, unlike you, you guys, know, we actually so you prepare went for to our conversation. Well, no, I, I'd like to make a very, <laughs> a very important uh, corresponding point to what yeah. I just said is, is that actually, when you look at how whites are treated by the justice system, even though there is this in group preference, uh, whites are actually treated very poorly by the justice system in the United States. Uh, we can look at, for example, the right to peacefully protest. How are yeah. our white peaceful protests treated versus black people? This black is completely, you don't want to get into this. One sec. Oh, sure we do. Sure we this do. Is well, some, so this is I, some like tier yeah, 11 dumb fuck let's, argument. Let's okay. We, we can let's debate that at another time, but the point we're getting at here is if black people, whether real or not, we're, me, and, me and James are not conservatives. We're not invested in a perfectly objective uh, justice system at all. We know. I am willing to listen to black people I'm willing to listen to black people like in Black Lives Matter who are demanding uh, hospitals that are staffed and for blacks. 
we want the same for whites. Let's do that. Who the, the, who, the obvious solution uh, to systematic racism to the extent right that... Uh, the, the, let's, the, let's let him finish. The, promise we'll come right back to you. The, the, the obvious solution to black people feeling like they live under a racist system is to give black people their own rights in their own system. Isn't that the obvious solution here? Okay. Where do we... I mean, I don't even know who he's arguing against. At yeah. This point. We... Okay, so... so you agree. Well, well, wait, 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 hold on. People. So really, really, really quickly, okay, because trying to make any points with you people is like pulling teeth. So the argument is conceded. There is a bias in the criminal justice system in the country of the United States of America. Now, I would point out factors like even a majority black um, uh, cities, there's still not a uh, supremely large bias against white individuals who are tried in those systems. In fact, the opposite seems to be the case. And uh, whereas uh, black people in very white cities tend to have the opposite inflicted on them. So the idea that this in-group preference is some sort of neutral, socially ambivalent force that equally directs black people against whites and white people against blacks doesn't really seem to be true. The fact that you would try to defer to th white protests as a sort of uh, me measuring stick for how white people are treated by our criminal justice system is pretty funny. If you want to have a conversation about what can be done to improve the disparity in our country's uh, uh, criminal and racial injustice, um, I mean, you're going to have to provide data I'll that an ethno-state... Be, wait, before they respond to... Before they respond okay, to, I would like to say it's pretty funny that you think talking to people from, like, the Nation of Islam is, like, representative of black opinions across the United States. That's would be like me saying I talked to Charlottesville neo-Nazi marchers, and, and yeah. I talked to these people, and I think that their opinions are representative of... Well, we have a Charlottesville neo-Nazi marcher here. You and Vosh have thousands of progressive fans... You, 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 and jo you and Vouch have thousands of progressive fans and couldn't find a single black person to at least bring on as a fucking token. Wait, we don't, uh, wait, on, we on don't this, like tokenism. Debate. Well, and, and I'd like to just add right. what's Right, you don't have saying. black people at all. At least conservatives have their tokens. Wait, I'm the, the, the streamer. Point I'm getting at, back to the, back to the, back hey, to what we don't saying. Have you seen the voter back base? To, Are you serious the, right okay. now? What do you mean? Back to what we were saying. Like, back, to, back to what we were saying strong African-American Republican vote. The factor of racism, you guys aren't letting me talk. Yeah, the factor of racism is 100% eliminated by having a system where black people have black police, they have black community leaders, uh. they have black judges and jurors, that is entirely a non-factor. There is no chance of a white person discriminating or people uh, of, or an Asian person or any other kind of person like that discriminating on a jury or as a police officer or anything if we only have separate systems. And explain so Ferguson. Ferguson led by black people, black police officers majority, black people were treated fucking horribly in that city. I'm saying if no explain no no, no explain is it the original sin of white people never whoa whoa wait, 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 wait stop with all this self persecutory bullshit yeah. I'm not interested in reading your fucking MySpace blog okay I didn't say shit about white people I'm asking you if black people will treat black folk better and white folk will treat white folk better explain to me why Ferguson uh, as a federal investigation was shown to be massively biased against its black inhabitants in spite of the fact that almost Ferguson every was run by a Republican mayor for your for your information if, wait, if you want to look at the demographics many... of that city. Wait, wait, wait. Ferguson has many white people in it, and it has a, a conservative. Well, wait, what percentage? Of, wait, you're, you're weaseling. Trial, wait, you're weaseling. But, weaseling. The point I'm getting you're, at is, but I mean, the idea is, if you want to remove a variable, if we want to be scientific and, and remove the uh, the independent variable here, we can just remove diversity, right? And if you want to find but how it doesn't people help. treat each other, well, it, it it does because then there's no opportunity for white racism or then or find. Black wait, wait, wait. we're not saying to, white to on black racism on the criminal we're saying systemic racism listen, no if you against want to black people, people outside one, black, one sec in order, order, order. all right okay okay where, one where last thing. if you know listen i sympathize with black people that go to school and have to read shakespeare go to school what? and they're and it's named after some white man or something i sympathize that black people don't don't feel any connection to this stuff i totally sympathize because when i had to read fucking chinua achebe I felt no connection we to don't that either. Care. So the point the point I'm making here is that black people have a right to their own community, their own police, their own culture, and to be taught their own values in school. And I agree. Listen, the main black criticism here of the criminal justice system is that it's a, it's a system created by whites for whites to benefit whites. Whatever the merits of that argument is, I don't even care. Let's create a system for blacks by blacks. And if get it over with. you were That's correct, it. then it should be easy for you to find a study 
on how greater oh. levels of black representation in city councils, mayorships, and police uh, uh, police representation leads to a decrease in the disproportionately negative treatment of black citizens in that city. I guarantee you, you will not be able to find that study. As also, it turns, I would just like to say that, like, uh, like uh, in terms of like talking about the breakdown for how we change a lot of this stuff, like, if we wanted to do a separate conversation on this, I'm really hesitant to do it on the fly. But I'm pretty sure me and Vosh between us have like 20 different suggestions related to like the war on drugs. It's funny you guys brought up like black juries, black people, community policing is one of the big like things that a lot of people actually want in this in the, in this country. Like, we could name like 20 policies off yeah. I'd be super interested, right, Striker, right. and your suggested right. realistic, politically possible policies that are going to get us to fucking like king. Kingdoms of different racial countries in the United States. Yeah, I, I, like, what a fucking pipe dream. I look forward to being like, here's a policy we could maybe look at. Here's some studies on it. You're like, huh, well, if we just had an ethno state, we wouldn't have that problem. Like, what yeah, would the discussion be? Boring. I, I'm not saying necessarily an ethno state, but if black people want to live in their own communities with their own system, I personally think they have a right to do that. Yeah, so that would be the discussion. Just now, back you and two, forth. the white, the white liberals we... that have crowned themselves the leaders of the black community. Why do you keep? You doing may that? disagree. You may disagree that that's what's good for are black you the people. leader of the i'd rather community? have this conversation with actual black people and see what they want why the fuck do we have to argue with you about this then why did you, you agree to this debate here? striker, you, striker you, why you did guys, you agree to this debate guys, if you didn't want to talk to white people about this they didn't want to talk to you us guys, is what they didn't want to talk to you guys are just here to obfuscate things that white people and black people by and large will agree they with mad. if they sit down and have a conversation without you jews and distractors and liberals all this shit that's that that you people represent you have the minority opinion probably could go into q a now, is this a what is it or called i should say closing statements so what, yeah. what is it called when the uh when the senator won't stop talking uh Destin? filibuster filibuster yeah yeah yeah, yeah. exactly yeah but i mean the problem is that like they wanted to come and have this conversation they wanted to like appeal to like one or two random numbers like that proved the point oh. and then he realized oh shit i have he nothing asked, to say uh, why am i talking to white people, people? oh no and then, and then, like and then like, instead of, I want instead of every, debating instead of debating black lives matter we got cuck lives matter debate why why we never this debate was never so wait first off i would make make a, a request to the moderator james sure. can you tell me one if the statement of what we were going to be debating is known by all parties beforehand two can you read that statement and three did striker know okay and i'm sincerely asking this does striker know that me and vosh were white coming into this debate because destiny kind of sounds like a black girl's name maybe he forgot <laughs> the last time we had a horrendously embarrassing conversation where we tried to say jazz wasn't real music um maybe he just I'll forgot that we were both white i'm not sure um can, can you verify those three things for me i don't know how you're going to do this destiny point. jazz he must have been black I can do the first two. So, you do, okay. if you guys would like, let's see. My camera's on, right? You can see. I know that my lighting is a little dark right now, but like, I'm, most people would consider me white. I would say the vast majority of Europeans that see me would probably consider me All white. Right. Yeah, I, I so met him. He's pretty pale. Just, you you get to speak on behalf of what black well, people think. Well, well, speaking of, we just we're not we're not talking about what black people think. We're just yeah. going over some studies because we we, yeah, we haven't okay. actually we haven't actually uh, completed. I mean. I, we have not conceded the point that this that the, in the United States there is a rampant systemic bias against blacks in the criminal justice system. I still disagree with that, Striker, and I, I still disagree with that. Wait, also, the we idea, don't care if there is destiny. If I can get more than fifteen seconds, James, that would be excellent. Um, the idea that that there is a, a widespread systemic, systemic bias against blacks this is not borne out when we look at federal policing, federal law enforcement, for example. Um, in what way? Look, what studies? What data? <laughs> what studies? No, say, wait, wait, in what it. way? <laughs> I love it when he asks me for data. It's such what, bullshit. What? It's London, no, the capital of Britain? Show me a study. Wait, 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 wait. you're just going to appeal to that? Like, well, we can see by looking at federal <laughs> data that you're argument. wrong. Wait, you think you can Let just beg the question on the second. entire argument? The Sunday follows one Saturday. Second. Show no. me the data. One second. Uh, I do have the phrase, if you guys want me to read the statement, I can. Otherwise, yeah, well, it might if I could, If I could finish the point that I'm making without an interjection. If yeah, you absolutely. want to finish this, and then I'll read the statement, and then we should probably go into the, yeah. the closings. Yeah. yeah, so let's look at let's look at uh, federal law enforcement, for example, the uh, United States Department of Justice. The United States Department of Justice exists almost solely to identify white uh, white people in this country and and charge them with hate cr federal hate crimes what? and prosecute them in cases such as such as the the uh, two men in Georgia who are being targeted with with hate crimes charges the man in uh in what is it new mexico white man in new mexico who defended himself against against anarchists that were threatening to kill him who is now finding himself the subject of a the federal hate crimes investigation why if there is a systemic bias at the at the system wide level you'd find it in the federal in the federal level your counter argument the, is, is that three white US people Department, have been charged on, no let sec. me finish these one are bit. examples Bausch, and examples. where's the data examples data examples aren't data dude we we do have right, but well, James, hold on. Let me finish. If if you had a a, a rampant systemic anti-black bias in 
federal uh, law enforcement, you would expect there to be similar charge, hate crime charges against blacks when blacks do things such as say, I hate white people and, and attack whites, uh, such as when, when blacks um, yeah, engage in violence against whites and, and express a racial animus. If you look at the, the statistics on this, which I will find for you in about 15 seconds, blacks are actually undercharged in uh, federal hate crimes. Uh, legislate if, under federal hate crimes investigations, uh, despite their, them committing more violent crimes. So right. we have a federal Wait, hate crimes a federal or violent system. crimes. They are they are under char- underrepresented in 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 terms of them being charged for for violent hate crimes. They are underrepresented in terms of being charged and investigated. They're under investigated well, for the hate federal, The FBI doesn't even bother policing blacks. What are we, uh, wait, can, can we can, wait? Stop. You can, you can stop. At, come on. Look at hey. Let me let me talk for a second. We've been talking for you, a while. You can, my dude. you can look at the murder clearance rate since the 1960s. It's gone in many, many cities from like 90 percent clearance to 60 percent clearance. The FBI has no interest in that. Meanwhile, they'll send 15 agents to go investigate a fake noose. And can you provide studies on this data? There you go. Yeah, there well, you go. Can Another you answer study. that? I mean, how do you? How Wait, do you we don't there's know. There's no way to answer one Where off is your study example. To this? This, is, this is there's not a you study provided the one off example. Exactly. I don't understand. This is well, like wait, 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 wait. Alsop was literally idea, like, here's some reality doesn't exist unless it comes from an ivory tower. Wait, wait, wait. Let's you get, were no, literally just like, we can look at real. Here's some example. Wait, wait, wait. I appeal to the moderator for me. Can we get a response? One sec. Just, just a. Okay, everybody on the same page. Okay. Okay. I just the idea of him like. Here are some examples. Where's your study to explain it? What the fuck are you talking right, because about? Because your your appeals are solely to academic authority, and that's fine if you want to do that. Uh, but we can look at the facts as they are. I provide and, and the studies, can, though. I don't now, ask you for them. We can look at the facts as they are, and and we can we can say are they are they true or not? And we don't need something to be blessed by the academic by the ivory tower academics really? for it to be real. We can, can we look please, at real examples yeah, of can real we things happening start in off, the real world. Can we please yeah, and you know these guys, time. these Wait, guys, please, hold on, one, one one all sec, the institutions are on their side. Destiny, we got to switch it back. Go ahead. Okay, I just next time because I fully admit I'm a pussy. I would have dodged this debate if he told me that we can't use any academic evidence because it's a huge waste. Yeah, that makes it much harder. Huge waste of time. Like, like if we were gonna start off with like, well, studies don't count. We're gonna have to go by news reports, like the three or four examples that I bring up. Like, like what a waste of fucking time. Lying. Like, you're holy lying. Shit. Like, lying. Dude, you literally, there are going to be people watching and they think lying. you're a paid opposition for the conservative. Destiny is that's a how self-described sociopath. Right so like, so wait, can we, wait, can we, wait, can we please calm, wait, can we calm down? Actually, is... I have to go through my PayPal transactions. I might have paid for this opposition because of how fucking stupid you look right now. I don't even fucking remember right now. That's how embarrassing <laughs> yeah. this conversation is. Back, back to the basics. Yeah, yeah. so wait, wait, wait. Let's, wait, how about we, how about we get back to the basics, which was, James the moderator, would you kindly repeat to everyone why we came here? and whether or not everyone was made aware of the debate topic before we arrived here in the Zoom call. Is everybody good with this? Uh, yeah. All else equal, African-American people are treated worse by the criminal justice system for no discernible reasons not directly or indirectly influenced by racism or race-based policies. Okay, so that was what we were supposed to be talking about. Every single time you pivot off the topic of discussion, you defer to data points that are not contextualized, which is what you have to do to understand what data means. This is literally correlation causation. I learned this in middle school. Every time you do that, you are silently conceding to us the fact that not only are you wrong, you have no fucking idea what you're talking about. So well, in the, the absence is... of any available arguments on your part, and as boring as this is getting, I think it would be wonderful if we could defer to the comparatively intelligent chatters and the super chats in which they have thrown us questions. You might so be probably going to find you, more help there. Than you you guys be. weren't prepared at all to discuss solutions to this or let's, anything like let's that. See. That's, that's because it wasn't the topic. Should. No, that's but because you don't do. like the solution. No, that's One because sec. it wasn't the topic. No, that's One, sec. One sec, gentlemen. Okay, so what we'll do is we had discussed right at the very start before we went live that we would have these roughly one or two minute closing. So what we'll do is- James, think, real quick, can you read the context of the emails we, we, we shared, me, you, Mike, and James? Um, <laughs> now context where, is where important. We, where we sh- <laughs> it's very important because we initially asked James for black people on the other side so we can discuss these solutions and so on. Have a, a, Do you have a study thing. on that? <laughs> can, can you, can you uh, is that- I'm is, asking you, you sincerely, that, do you have a study on that? Yeah. I mean, I can. It's true. You you asked for black opponents. I yeah. I can I can pull that up and, and okay. read it if you well, like. What happened okay, no, when Mike fine. Enoch saw that the conversation was going to be against two people that he knew he'd lose his shit over? He left. It was a waste of time. Yeah, Enoch was smart. He backed out. First of all. 
This is not a waste of time. Me and Bosch are making down. a lot of money right now. Okay. Okay. So, hold on. Number one, Actually, it's not a waste of time. I'm making a lot of money James, right now. Thank James, you very much. James, and number two, you had James, the opportunity. Mike to, said he could do it in start. July because he had an busy. opportunity I mean, to leave. This is, this this is such a one sec. To be fair, to be fair, I've got a. What do you guys want me to read? I, I want you to read the fact that Mike said he could do it in the, the debate in July because he's he's first of all, he's doing stuff with the business. He's doing uh, a bunch of other shit. Like there's a lot of projects going on. These people are not even worth his time. These two losers. <laughs> so it's true he, that Mike said, yeah, he didn't waste business, his time then. That is his business. Things had ramped up and, and he that was why he was not going to be here. If you guys want to come back in July, I'm open to it. Um, or if it's on another channel, we'll promote it. We'll tweet it. We'll do whatever we can so people see it there. Um, but right. there you go. That was the init. Wait, you can't point to the first. Show me the data. Part. <laughs> you can't point at the first part of your negotiation and go, why didn't we do right. that? Where did we end yeah, up? You accepted on the debate you after you knew the opponents. Yeah. yeah, like what? How stupid. To, like, we, okay, so this that's is That's like offering we, like 80K for a salary for a job and they come back at 60. And then at the closings. end of the month, they're like, yeah, why didn't you pay what we initially talked about? Like, how fucking stupid are you? Let's go to Super Chats. Let's go to Super Chats. Well, closing. So that would be Striker and and also first. We'll kick it over. Would you like one or two minutes for each person? I won't need long. Whatever they want. Yeah, sure. I could I could take that. Um okay. yeah, I think it's it's eminently clear that they <laughs> that if we if this conversation is supposed to be a comparison of who is best at going through JSTOR and clipping abstracts that they think reinforce their points, uh, you know, that's that's if that's the metric you want to use, that's absolutely fine. But I think when it comes to addressing the real solutions for the problems that, that are manifest out of racial tensions in the United States. It's clear that only one side here is prepared with uh, with honest answers and an honest assessment of of the inevitability of some of these problems. And like we said, um, the the idea that there is widespread racism and 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 um, anti black treatment, blacks are just so maligned by the criminal justice system. That is debatable. I'm skeptical of that. There is there is evidence for in policing. There's evidence. Uh, in terms of black crime, this is just not the case. Uh, blacks being uh, undercharged for things like hate crimes. You know, we can talk about all of that. But if you believe that blacks and whites both feel aggrieved by a criminal justice system that is not working for them, and they feel aggrieved as a condition of racial diversity, then there is only one answer. And that answer is right. to have separate systems. You cannot coexist in the same system because there will always be a group that perceives that they are being slighted. Whether, whether that's uh, empirically backed up by those in ivory towers or not. So the idea that, that you can divorce these two things, uh, I, I don't think you can. I don't think you can divorce the conversation about whether or not there is a problem without being willing to talk, talk about how to solve that problem. And right. my problem with the criminal justice system is not that blacks are being mistreated. My problem is, is if anything, that black, uh, black criminality is not being policed hard enough and that whites are being mistreated by the system, mm -hmm. generally speaking. But Stryker and I, we are more than prepared to talk about how to solve this. And right. we solve this by having separate systems for separate people by according to their own separate values. That is the only answer. And mm -hmm. if we were in a position to be able to talk to, to black leaders about this, they would agree with us. But, right. but white liberals, it is so funny how white liberals will insist on keeping blacks and whites trapped in the same system that they, they, they assert is hurting blacks so how many but minutes? yet yet here they are right about, insisting okay. that they be trapped yeah. in the system together very funny yeah right. so that i'll go two minutes like, 12 so we'll give everybody two minutes and 12 seconds go ahead gotcha. so first of all if blacks and whites are the same this conversation wouldn't even be happening like there's no congressional hearing on whether white police officers are racist to east asians right so white liberals may virtue signal in support of anti-racism but in practice they're all fleeing the big cities that are facing unrest right now there's all kinds of articles in various uh, mainstream publications about urban exodus. It's mostly these white liberal types. It's just, it's just a ridiculous argument to have because these people have no skin in the game. They, they, they are not living in these black communities. They, don't, they probably don't know any black people other than Jesse Lee Peterson. Uh, <laughs> so I don't even understand what, 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 why they're doing this. Like, this is just absurd. We need, to, we need to frankly have a very frank discussion with the black community, with their leadership, um, or just any black person, actually, you know, I, I do, I am curious to hear their perspective. Their perspective is important here because they're the ones that are complaining about this stuff. So I'd like to have a conversation with them. This is something that never happens. The ADL recently, Louis Farrakhan was going to give his capstone speech of his political and social career as an activist, as a black leader. 
And more people know Louis Farrakhan, more black people approve and know of Louis Farrakhan than do Destiny and Vouch. I guarantee you that. And he was going to give this big address on Fox News and the Anti-Defamation League under the Zionist Jonathan Greenblatt got him censored. So the point is, real black voices aren't even heard in these discussions. All we're, here we are, the so-called evil neo-Nazis demanding that we have some black people at the table and we come to an agreement, okay? Because it's pretty obvious the multiculturalism is the problem because no one here would disagree that America has become significantly less racist as a society since the 1950s, and yet accusations of racism have only gotten worse. So clearly this system, this liberal system, neoliberal capitalist Zionist system is not working for black people. It's not working for white people. I've had conversations with prominent blacks about this, and they agree with me. Now show me what prominent blacks agree with Destiny and Vouch. The answer is zero. They don't have anyone. So uh, one last thing, Martin Luther King, what did he say? Martin Luther King said very, very, very clearly, the white moderate, he's talking about white liberals, white moderate is the problem. I agree with him. These are the people that get in the way and do, they, they, they disingenuously change the topic or they make it about white, self, white guilt and things like that. We don't want to talk to these people anymore. Black people don't even like you. So give me a fucking break. Next one. Okay. You bet. Do you mind if I take the floor, Destiny? Um, yeah, you can go first. Go for it. Yeah, okay. So... I know that these are closing statements and they're not supposed to contain arguments, but even I am shocked by the irrelevance of, uh, especially strikers, a chosen end. Um, a, um, God, where do I even begin? It's funny. Um, it's, it's funny that you would, uh, make jokes about us being a liberals when your obsession with identity politics rivals that of the most inebriated wine moms. We wanted to debate black people. You're white. You're not a representative of the black community. We, we, you, you, Louis Farrakhan was loved by black people. How many black people have destiny? And whatever it takes to soothe your wounds after coming here with no fucking arguments. At no point did Destiny and I make the argument that in this country, there is a system of white people hurting black people or black people hurting white people, only that the systems within this country are biased largely against black people. The reason we point this out is because we want to ameliorate and address these problems. The reason we point this out is because we share the dreams of so many other black leaders throughout the history of this country. And I know neither of you give a single shit what black leaders in this country have historically pushed for, but I'll address that anyway. To see this country mended along its racial lines, whereas you would see it exacerbated and the faults attributed to, um, I suppose for you two it would be the Jews, but to others it would be other groups. Everything that I do is done out of a love, both of black people and of people of other races. And what's more, your, this is you in particular also, repeated insistence that we should not have to defer to the ivory tower to make our arguments is very telling. Because if what you were saying was true, that a society run by black people would not be discriminated against black people and vice versa with white people, there would be data on it. And there would be studies on it because that would appeal to the liberal wine mom argument. Oh, if we just make the mayor black and the police chief black, then there won't be any racism against black people. The pe the, they would get grants for that research, but you will not find research affirming that position. You don't dislike the ivory tower because it's elitist. You dislike it because you know it will trash your arguments time and time again. So yeah, Two to that, you may have what you will. Destiny? Um, I, just before I start this, I just want to say I do submit myself to third party arbitration. If a uh, third party wants to go through my PayPal or bank statements, I didn't pay James or Eric to be here. I know that it might seem otherwise, but I swear to God, I haven't. And I will submit myself to somebody else who want to verify that. Um, like striker, like you keep saying over and over again that like, I'm talking to black separatist groups and they want to separate <laughs> like, yeah, no fucking shit. Like if you're going to cite like the, the, the nation of Islam or Hoteps or other, or even the new black Panthers who are all like black separatist groups as being people that want to separate from the United States. Like, congratulations. Like, it's so funny that you guys will do this in the, in the next breath cry that like, they call every single conservative a neo-Nazi. They call every single blah, 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 blah. Well, you're trying to say the nation of Islam represents black America. How hilariously fucking stupid. And then to James, like his entire thing about how like, oh, well, you can't talk about problems without talking about solutions. Of course you can. What the fuck kind of stupid ass shit is that? You have to identify problems before you can talk about any solutions. You can't talk about solutions and problems in the same breath. If you don't even agree on what the fucking problem is, which was supposed to be what this conversation was about. It was a conversation 
conversation on what is the problem right now? Is there or is there not systemic racism? Instead, we totally moved off of that. And we've gone to this fantastic idea of, of creating separate but equal ethno states, all while hilariously using fucking Martin Luther King and even Malcolm X, who later in his life realized that segregation was fucking stupid, as though these guys would be coming out in favor of your argument today is just so hilariously fucking stupid. And I think that it's perfect. I think it encapsulates your entire argument that you thought you could prove that by using single quotes by them, that, that you could prove that they were in favor of segregation, the same way that you try to use like a single stat or a single data point to prove some non-existent argument that you've attempted and failed horribly to make about systemic issues in the United States and the criminal justice system. That's all I got. Destiny's like the guy who, whose tire blows out of the highway and then uh, gotta, stands there looking we, at it like, well. If I remember right, Destiny and Vosh get the, the closings because we let you guys start. I can, so I can, I can, we do yeah, have to I go can, into the Q&A, okay. to be fair. Right. Next, thanks for your questions. We, Jerkin asks, Reddit, they said, Reddit changed its hate speech policy to allow hate speech against, quote, the majority, unquote, i.e. white people. <laughs> Why is being anti-white so good for business? I don't know if this is a sincere question now that I read it. Yeah. Can you find me anywhere in the Reddit TOS where they say they're encouraging anti-white discrimination? Find that for me and I'll answer it. Yeah, well, they, this, this is what Spez said in the, in, in the thread. This is part of their updated Rule 1 guidelines, uh, is that, that um, speech against minority uh, groups, that is, those that are not in the majority. I can find the exact quote for you. It's, on the, it's in the thread. Well, but yeah, hey, this well, is the new Reddit terms of service. Then shouldn't you be pushing for a demographic replacement because then whites will be a majority and they'll be protected on Reddit? Next. No, they won't. That, that's the fun. That's actually, actually, that's a good point. That <laughs> whites, one would think, if the system, if all else were equal, that whites would be protected under civil rights law. Uh, but as we see, that is not the case. As, as we see, whites actually do not find ourselves protected uh, by, by civil rights legislation. And Wait, uh, I'm sorry, can yeah. you be fired for being white? Yes. You can be fired for not saying Black Lives Matter, actually. Yes, no. you can. Wait, that's, that's a political, political opinion. opinion. That's not a protected, it's called that's not a, that's not a protected it. class. You, you, it's called, it's called affirmative action. Expressing. That's why blacks are more likely to get a public sector. Oh, yeah. Remember when, when you when you took those cases of the Supreme Court and you lost? Uh, is there anything else you have? Oh, wow. But, yeah, that's exactly our point. You. Just to get to the... Uh, <laughs> that's exactly our point. I think we can all agree... The point was that racial bias didn't exist in the same way that you... You're giving us our point and then snarkily laughing about it. I like how you're pretending that I'm giving you your points when you guys spent the entire argument... You said white sued based on discrimination and lost in court. That's a symptom of an anti-white Yeah, and if you actually follow that court argument, they didn't make their case. When it loses, it proves we were right all along. The original Super Chat was challenging Destiny and Vosh, so to not getting up on them i gotta give them the last word oh yeah and i'll wait if you want an actual answer there's nothing anti-white about the policies there the reason why some websites are more keen to protect against discrimination against minorities is because that type sure. of discrimination tends to be a lot more harmful um you don't just see like these gigantic huh data to, just to, short and sweet I, I hate to be so pushy, oh yeah yeah but... sure um i because it's because you're because your question is dumb and it's not true there sorry wool wool's game d thanks for your question said what do Bosch and destiny think about malcolm x collaborating with anp founder george lincoln rockwell to establish a mutually interested black separation plan he moved back on that later in his life i disagree with that i don't i don't i don't slavishly devote myself to the the scripture of any figure. Uh, I think that like many great men, Malcolm X had many good opinions and many bad, and I disagree with that one. Next. Well, there's, but the problem is there's more blacks praising Nazis than there are blacks praising white liberals. How do you explain that historically? Blacks approve of what the fuck you guys are doing. What? Show me a quote. Why, why do you said I use anecdotes of great black leaders. Show me a quote of a black leader that says, I love white liberals. I think why do black people great. overwhelmingly vote for white liberals? I don't fucking know. Yeah, look at race Why do white people vote? vote for conservatives who are just as anti-white as the Democrats? Wait, 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 wait. You do realize like, that argument fell apart real quick. The buddy. vast majority of black really people dumb. voted black for people... Hillary Clinton in 2016, right? Yes. Like this is completely untenable argument. And they also vote for Biden over the far more progressive Bernie Sanders. How, how do you explain that, Bosch? Wait, what does that have to do with Nazis? Ah, there we go. Wait, okay, what does that have to do with Nazis? Wait, 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 how does that argue? Is this where we dry out the you are pivoting? Are you have to? Are you okay? Are you having a heat stroke? Have to give Vosh and Destiny the last word just because it was directed to them. Sorry. Next, J.A. J. A. Kess, this is for both sides. So we get uh, both sides, and maybe what we'll do is start with Vosh and Destiny, and then we'll kick it over to Stryker and also. So they asked, what do both sides of the debate feel about Blacks having their own state with their own police? And do both sides agree that, uh, this confuses me, agree that access to black people both in proximity and, sexu and sexually is not a human right? What? I, 
Wait, what? Can you? I'm. Or go ahead. Can you read that again though? When you sure the the first part, I so you know what do both sides of the debate feel about blacks having their own state with their own police? And then I don't know how separate this other question is. They said, do both sides agree that access to black people, both in proximity and sexually, is not a human right? Um, Oh, I think they mean like if the if blacks and whites were separated into like. I don't, geologically distant places. I don't think you have a human right. I don't think people born in Minnesota have their human rights violated because there are no fucking black people around. I think I believe in like individual rights. I think that anybody should be able to move to or do whatever they want. But I think as soon as you start discriminating against other people based on their race, we have a problem. If you want to go ahead and move to if you're black and you want to move to some fucking African country because you want to live amongst black people, that's fine. Same with white people and wherever they want to move to. But if you start trying to keep other people from coming in based on their skin color, I think that's an issue. An issue gotcha. for who? For you? Are you? Black well, well that. I, I, you know, that's actually Do you know what point. ethics Gosh, is? A, hold on, like that's the an concept? interesting point. Because, because we only see that you're, you're talking about these two things as if they're equal, but we see in practice that they're not. There are not floods of whites moving This to, is completely irrelevant. Areas. We were just well, talking ethically. You just, no, you just, you just you set this up as, as an example, so we need to address it. Ugh. There are not hordes of white people moving to black countries. Not yet. That's just not happening. Well, and it's not going to. Oh, it'll, white oh, it'll happen. Nicer. It'll happen. No, just you wait. Nicer. People don't want to live there. Yeah, Africa's Why do we blowing see millions... up right now, my dude. It's getting big. Pretty soon, people, Why your do we kids, see your grandkids are going to be silly. running I mean, over to Uganda. This is yeah, yeah, this is just ridiculous. Serious. Because well, what we see is, is millions, in fact, millions of Africans moving into the West. Uh, they they did a poll. I forget the 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 um, it was billions that, actually that polled um, people in developing countries and when they asked them where would they most like to live, the number two answers were Germany and the United States. And so, you I know, they were not saying other developing think. countries. Yeah, they want to live around white yeah, people. They, they want to live, they want to live in Let's, economically prosperous is, is countries. Is access to AKA white, white people. Right. Eric, Eric, and, and also, if you guys want to answer this question, you're, you don't have to, but if you want, you can, and then we'll move on to the next one. The yeah, question, we, we agree with, with the first part of the question that blacks should be able to have their own states and police forces. Uh, I think... Eric and I both agree on that. But the second question, is there some kind of right to black uh, people and, and sexuality? Uh, no. And I would expand that to say there's there's also not a right, uh, a human right, it's access to white countries or to white resources or to white civilization or white states or white people. Uh, so, so yeah, I would, I would agree with that statement. Gotcha. I try so and... hard to actually just answer the questions. I feel like they have like a script they go off on every time they get the chance to, but. Yeah, cry more. <laughs> Next, so there's a guy who reads abstracts off JSTOR. Next he's a Osu. Osu. An abstract is better than a single number. At Being least. insulted yeah. for like reading the data. Rate. This state of white nationalism in 2020. Yeah, seriously, you're literally like offended by no one's. A, no like, one's. Wait a second. That's no, not I, fair. I, you read I, I, data. I, that's not what. That's not that's what I'm exactly saying. Exactly what you're saying. That's Next. exactly I, what you're saying. I'm saying. I'm saying Next. that you are. You are. You were citing sociology and shit like that that is ideological. It's for people like you. Sorry, who else studies crime but sociologists? Would you want to I mean, find a physicist if, if, publishing if, data on it? With no. the fuck kind of? I, I can find you. He's uh, asking for the last name of the people who published it. I, I, He's I trying can, to find Goldstein. You, uni- I can find you university Bro. studies from the People's Republic of China mm-hmm. that prove race is real. The reason why is that Chinese universities don't have the same ideological problems American universities do, which are well, private. Well, if we were having a debate on whether or not race was real, it'd be uh, really good to bring those studies up, I guess, huh? Right, I can show it to you right now, let's 2019. They, they mapped right, out. Sorry, right, right, James, okay. my friend. Let's move on. All good? Great. Yeah, James Thanks. Kunz, yeah. <laughs> Might as well have you moderate. Thanks, sorry. No, I just, oh, I just like you, man. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm teasing you. It's, it's good. And by I the way, it. what people at home can't one. see, you are fucking yoked. Because I met nice you in person. You, you are massive, that. my dude. I just... you. We are. We will get to the next one. So, Osu, Osu, thanks for your question. Said, how can you support the police when they aid and abet the murderous family courts that separate fathers from their loving children on a daily basis? How can we stop the lib fash family court judges? Who's that for? Who's that for? I'm not exactly sure, to be honest. Okay, the, the answer is that we can simultaneously recognize that there are problems within a system with the need to still support and reform the system. I mean, this is a stupid question. There's tons of problems with the police. That doesn't mean you get rid of them entirely or whatever. Oh, um, well, there can be tons Mouse of problems. Disagrees. That's well, if we were arguing a cab, then that would have been a better debate to have, I guess. Well, huh? I'm just a um, humble progressive, okay? I'm joking. Sure. And even I if I'm not actually like, closer. You can, to Bosch on this question, I fucking. Uh, I guarantee you that, however close you are to him, it is in a very strange way and probably for very fucking different. Please don't get fang. close to me, sir. 
Says, says, um, says the two fags. Okay. I, well, yes, firstly, I'm only whoa! half. We're not gonna have that. I so would li- okay. I would like to clarify. Okay, I'm only half fag. Okay, so it's not fair that he keeps calling me gay. True. Okay, I case. have a wonderful girlfriend. Please. Yeah. Um, and then uh, number two, uh, yeah, Through just because this. you have a problem with a particular <laughs> part, um, just because. I really want to make it personal, but I'm trying not to, Trevor, because I know right, how much right, I can right. lose you. Well, they consented um, listen, to being fucked by us during this debate, so I don't see what that has to do. Like, I don't know. Like, this seems um, like the clock yeah, killing the cuddle. But, but anyway, yeah, you can recognize there's a problem with the system while still acknowledging other beneficial parts of it or saying you need to reform the system as a whole. Yeah. Next, appreciate your question. This one coming in from, want to remind folks, we, oh, in the chat, we do not want spam. So please, folks, don't spam. Otherwise, we're getting more aggressive with it. We'll just ban you if you're, if you're spamming. It's annoying. And let's see, two seconds. I got a little bit behind on the questions here. Thanks for your question from Jimmy Neutron. Forest Riker, did you know, let's see. Gosh, okay, some of these are next. I bet. Let's see. I think this is a sincere question. Gustavian, thanks for your question, said, I've heard some conflicting reports. Could Vosh please clarify his position on the destruction of the state of Israel? <laughs> oh, are we are we trying to do the Red Brown Alliance here? Nah, I've been critical. is listening. Hold I've been on. critical. I've been Careful. critical of Israel in some pretty hyperbolic ways in the past. Um, but obviously, I would trend ideally towards reform uh, over uh, some crazy, you know, nuclear option. Good. Mm. That's that's the right answer. Jonathan next, approves. Next up, Bob Dole. Thanks for your question. For Stryker and James, do you feel that Patriot, the that Patriot Front is the face of nationalists organizing in America? They've been heavily ramping up their activism and seem to not be burdened by the drama that plagued previous orgs. Um, I don't. I don't talk about activism. I mean, if that's the thing you want to do, go for it. I don't. I don't have any. Yeah, I, I have good relations with Patriot Front. They're good guys. Next up, question for Stryker and Alsup. Why is your main evidence a policy that was only impl- implemented to terrorize black communities in stop and frisk for pot? Well, well I mean, it, that, it got a lot of guns off the street. And no, it, it, didn't. it it yeah. Well, this is a question for this us. Russ. And it got a lot of guns off the street. So you're free to lie. Was, it was imp- <laughs> yeah. Oh, I uh, can't let you talk on this one. Go no, on. no, it can't. And we can't interrupting mean, each other right now. <laughs> Hold on. We went through the data on this and, and demonstrated that this was yeah. a policy that helped uh, reduce New York's homicide rate at a faster rate than the national average. So, I and mean, another if, thing and, about and the is, marijuana stuff, uh, the, the problem with the marijuana studies, and this is, again, this is disingenuous. It's a political ideology of American universities, which are private and rely on private grants from people with their own ideologies. Institutions are made up of people. And so what happens is <clears throat> they take two plus two and make five. And so you have a situation where blacks are more likely to be uh, charged with marijuana charges. That's true. But that's because they got some pot on them when they shoot another guy. That's why. It's very well, obvious. And, and, and have any the, data on that? The language, the yes, language I on, actually on do. I will, link, I will link it in the, in the chat. And one more thing. People who feel terrorized, and this is actually just exactly what Stryker and I were saying, is that people may feel terrorized or unfairly infringed upon by the system. Black people might. But that is because this is a system, again, that was that was built by whites. And so if you feel terrorized or that it's unfair for you to be searched because you are more likely to be committing murder in this city, then that's an understandable objection you can have to the system. But this is this is how we're going to do things in the, in the United States. So if you don't like that, that's fine. This is this just further is further evidence for the necessity of separate systems. Just curious, you said that um, you did present the data on how many guns were found during stop and frisk. Did you, have, did you actually? Did I miss that? How many we, guns were found we for stop and frisk? demonstrated that stop and frisk and broken windows policing were uh, helped New York City reduce their homicide rate that is not faster what he than asked. the national average. You, that's not what I asked. I, you, you don't actually have the, oh, he's looking at his monitor right now trying to find it. Um, so I can tell you for some of those numbers. This, uh, so here, just a real quick one, just how effective these stops were. In 2012, the NYPD made some 532,000 stops. They found guns 715 times. That means that in zero, less than 0.1% of all stops, did they actually turn up any firearms. What a waste of our fucking money. If you want to do make any, it do any studies that demonstrate that those people were not going to, the, those people were not violent criminals? What does that have to do with anything? Also, any how many, how many whites did they criminals? catch with guns? How many what? What does that have to do with what he's I'm talking about how the efficaciousness 
of stop and frisk. If it's taking you a half million stops Based to find a race, few, right? Well, the you, racial well, disparities in stop and frisk in terms of discrimination. I don't, I don't think I they mean, get we're it. having a hard time study, following. Destiny, what Destiny, I don't think they're going to get it. 715 people, we're not, we're not going to use those guns in shootings. 700 people, 700 lives could have been saved. Or more. Is that where's inconsequential? Your, where's your study saying they weren't? E- even, if, even if that was the case, don't you think maybe those half million police stops could have been used in other ways? Like maybe, for instance, having background checks for private sellers for firearms. Maybe that could get more violent firearms off the street. I mean, that was than, already in, in place in New York anyways. But oh, yeah, all across the entire country. Was that actually something in that New was York like City, a United Destiny. States one? Oh, I forgot New York City was the only city that matters. Which is the, the only one you guys about. prepared numbers for. Well, because you were talking specifically about stop and frisk, which is a New York City policy. You can smile right, all you so want, but like <laughs> a policy that was implemented only in New York City. What are we even talking about right now? Yeah, holy shit. The amount of bad faith is Staggering. You're talking about New York City. We respond with New York City, and you're saying, "Why are we talking about New York City?" That's yeah. the, the, the just because I'm saying the that there is any was, number. Let's move on to the next background question. Checks, there any number of, right, there any, I agree. Moving, there are any number of policies we could do that would probably be more financially viable than stop and frisk for taking. Yeah, the, the argument he was making is that there is a ubiquitous ineffectiveness to stop and frisk with regards to getting guns off the streets that could be applied to better purposes. What city? What city? So why are you saying why are we talking about New York? I don't think. We're talking about think, New York because that's where stop and frisk. I don't at. think you can actually follow. Do you know what ubiquitous means? Okay, yeah. Whoa, whoa. Of course not. No. Okay. He didn't read that. That wasn't Next. a word used a lot in Shakespeare. So yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a J store word right there. He's not that's touching a J, that's that. That's a one. J store word. Okay. Oh, so I do have to. I have to give uh, because yeah. that I think that super chat was originally directed at James and Eric. I got to give him the last word on that one, and then we got to go to the next one. Oh, that was the, the one about stop and frisk. Oh yeah. I think well, you know, I just, found, I just uh, you know, found something interesting here, actually. Uh, February 2020, uh, black uh, police commissioner, black uh, member of the, sorry, not police commissioner, member of the Pennsylvania Board of Pardons, Brandon Flood, black guy saying that he wants to implement stop and frisk in Pennsylvania uh, to get illegal guns off the street. So, I mean, look, if we're going to talk That's about the, black, argument. the, the on, impact second, on, on black, black people in this country, maybe we should listen to actual blacks when the, they demand one black person. And back, and back to, to, person, to, to the person to the asking the word. question, one last thing about the person asking the question who said, this is a policy that terrorizes black people, which is fine. Yeah. Let's have different policies for different people then. In different next. neighborhoods, of course. Just, because, of course, next. Can't, when, if I may, reason, really the quickly, misunderstanding, no, you may not. Point. The, the, get, mis- we, the reason, yeah, the reason why Karen yeah. calls the police when a black man is go- approaching her and threatening her is because Europeans and black people have a different concept of what a threat is, what danger is, and so on. And that may, be, may well be true. <laughs> what well, that's what the misunderstanding is with Karen. So well, the point is, the point is maybe Karen and that guy shouldn't be in the same area then. Next. Brenton Langle, thanks for your question. Uh, Eric Stryker, you remember debating Brenton, right? He yeah. says, I he live in me, Harlem. By the way. Sorry. I'm sure he'll forgive you and you guys will reunite. He says, I lived in Harlem for 10 years. There was gentrification, but it's still majority black and always perfectly safe. Stop and frisk was a monstrous policy. I don't know if they- I'll tell something to, to Brenton, who I doubt is a native New Yorker. If you walk down the street in Harlem, there's a police officer on every corner. I don't know about right now at this moment. I haven't lived in New York in a bit. But there's a police officer on every corner. New York City has some of the most police officers per capita in the world. It has like a 6 or $7 billion police budget. So the reason why it's safe for Brenton Lengel to walk through Harlem at night is because there's cops on every corner. And Brenton Lengel, as an anarchist, wants to abolish the cops. And I say, you know, honestly, personally, all those white liberals, all those Zionists that live in Bushwick that live in these hipsters that live in Bushwick and Williamsburg and Harlem. You know what? I would say the cops should pull out and let them see what the world they want looks like. Next okay. question four. This is a Google user said, what do you all both parties have to say to regarding Asian people and their place in broader racial discourse? It seems like they're always completely overlooked when it comes to discussions like this. Yeah. Um, Asian people are in a really unique position because there are a lot of the a lot of the Asian representation we have in this country are either very wealthy immigrants or the children of wealthy immigrants who come here for economic or for educational opportunities, which means that they are in some respects a social minority, but in certain educational and economic senses, actually um, disproportionately powerful. Um, I think the reason why they aren't talked about as much is actually just because their situation is so complicated. And to, to be honest, it's something that I would need to like look more into before I felt comfortable making any strong statements. Gotcha. Thanks so much. So I'll, I'll say this about Asian people. Asian people are Wait, largely was this our invisible. Question? 
No, it's for everyone. Oh, fuck. Uh, Asian people are largely invisible in our society. That's true. Um, and, you know, they, they don't really have anyone pandering to them or anything because they don't really have that many grievances in terms of a day-to-day basis, which is whatever. They just mind their own business. Um, what, what I'd say, though, is that in general, you know, I think we need a discussion with all the races at the table, including Asians, about what's going on with this country. You know, basically everyone agrees, maybe not, not the two debating opponents, but everyone agrees that America is broken. America's a declining empire, and there's Wait, a lot I'm of a socialist. Going on. You don't think I think America is broken? You sound like a liberal, so I don't know. But, but anyway, you're the one who's super. You sound obsessed like a Biden liberal. Fan. I don't know about anything, about anything about you. related. Do you even know what? It, wait, what does a liberal mean? To he you doesn't know. A, li- a liberal, a liberal is a person that believes in li- in individual maximalism as a value. Okay, that's their political value. Where the Which fuck? Val- wait, hold on. I'm sorry. Wait, hold on. Wait, I'm curious. Hold what on, did Vosh say earlier that he believes in in individual liberty and and maximizing egalitarianism? So yeah, I mean, you you did. Actually, yeah. is that what you guys believe in a classical liberal sense? But most okay, Americans so would also think, liberal. wait, you said it. Wait, you All said right, most Americans would agree question. this country is broken. Or so most Jesse of America can also liberal? answer the question about Asians. Anyway, Jesse, wait, is on. most no, of I America mean, liberal? What is most of America? If most of America agrees America is broken, but liberals don't think America is broken. Wouldn't a liberal recognize that there are systemic injustices in America, which would lead them have to believe America congr- is broken? Have you seen the approval rate for my, Congress? It's my, 12%. Uh, to another question. From, it's 12% approves of Congress. Any, always a new question. Any, anything from Destiny. Yeah. Uh, yes. If you had a point, Destiny, I'll let you give you a shot to I, I Yeah, I don't, I don't even know. Like, like statements you're making are inconsistent with themselves. Like, um, the, and then also what Vosh brought up before, like Chinese people represent like the second largest immigrant group in the country. Like tons of Chinese people that come over here from China. Like, of course, if you've got the money to immigrate halfway around the fucking world and then come to another place for opportunities and education and shit, you're going to be like massively represented in higher portions of the population and like have Nigerians. No big but but also the fact that like, do you want to pretend that like Asian people haven't had problems in the history of America? I mean, we literally had internment camps here. No, one, no um, one's even arguing that. I do, I do appreciate the fact that you said I must not think America is broken because I'm a liberal, but it was my inclination towards liberal values, such as a pursuit of justice and equality, that led me to make the argument that America is broken in this debate. Um, so, okay. Yeah, yeah, I so know. The point, okay. is, the, yeah, point is, the point is that, like, Nigerians are also more successful economically than whites, and they, they're black, and we can't just go on forever. And the reason is that, the, yeah, I'll say this, Nigerians that immigrate to America come from a certain, they're the high class of Nigeria. Oh, you, okay, go look up when you get a chance. No, I know, but we were talking about Asian immigrants. Are. What are we? The point is, it's about, this is a question that also has immigrants in general, right? Let's talk about immigrants in general. This, basically, what's going on here is that you guys claim America is this, this country or whatever, and black yeah. people do just fine as, if, if they're from Nigeria. That totally destroys your point, but that's a very 1.0, like, basic point. So let's just move on. Well, if I could just inter- say one thing about Asians real quick, I think that the impact of Asian immigration on Native American workers, Native American being you know, Americans, not uh, not Indian Americans, but Native um, born Americans is actually vastly under discussed. And the majority of those, um, those immigrants, Chinese immigrants specifically that you're talking about, um, are EB5 immigrants, which is a special visa class where people have to, uh, I-, I think, um, put either $500,000 or a million dollars into effectively a holding company in the U.S. Uh, and are, are given a green card. It's essentially a, a um, buying citizenship scheme that uh, Donald Trump has actually uh, worked to expand. So, yeah, I, I think we, we in the discussion about immigration, which is a topic for another time, um, the Asian uh, impact on, on American workers is actually vastly under-discussed. Next, let's see, Colin Wood... And Vosh and you might not grant everything in the question, I'm not sure, but they said, given that African Americans are more likely to commit crime, why should we not assume that they're more likely to be unfit jurors? The, oh my God. Destiny, do you want to take like the eight answers to that or? So because black people are more likely to commit crime, we have like an entire vetting process for jurors and also the whether or not you've committed a crime. I, I don't even know how, what, what type of juries that factors into like, just because some group might have a higher proclivity towards something else doesn't mean that you can't like interview said group and, and, you know, screen out like bad applicants or whatever for whether it's a job or a jury selection or anything else. Like, I don't, I don't you know, it was the that. highest predisposition towards violent crime men by an unfathomable margin. So if we want to go down that line, we don't want men in juries, obviously, because they're too irrational and angry. We don't don't want them as judges. We don't want them as politicians because they're clearly not capable of controlling themselves. Like, ultimately, the point of processes like 
a judicial review or of literally any job hiring process or of elections is to suss out whether or not a person is a legitimate uh, candidate for that position. And in the case of that ju ju judicial um, striking, that study that I mentioned, they accounted for factors such as that, um, uh, uh, criminality, economic background, what have you, which means the only thing remaining was racial bias. Yeah. If you really, if you really wanted to be biased in a system and get rid of like all the bad applicants and you would focus on age and you'd focus on sex. So like young people between the ages of probably like, what like 14 and 32 or whatever. And then men, if you get rid of that, you like 99% of like violent offenders are in that group right there. What about blacks? But you don't need to. We don't even. Know. So you can stereotype being, being men, but not blacks. Wait, black I'm not saying. I'm not saying. First of all, no, no, no. If you want, if you want a predictor for violent crime, going with men, getting rid of all men is going to be way better blacks? than getting rid of all blacks. Wait, but black women don't like commit much crime. They're really what? not that violent crime compared to like young white men. No. Yeah. Compared to compared to white women. Yeah, when you control for We're economic factors. Ah, oh, no, not wait, that. Wait, 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 wait. When you can, yes, when you control for <laughs> stuff like <laughs> poverty, the you know the very basic tier one stuff a criminologist would learn in their sleep. It's been proven yes. that poor white people commit less crime no. than middle class black people. Yep. That's been proven time and time again. I'll I'll drag this study up for it. Wait, the you is this the image the, from that John trying to make the one? Is image it the from John the one city? Yeah. yeah. That wasn't yeah. a real. Well, that's not an argument. So wait, it wasn't real it's data. A study. I don't. I don't know. No, it wasn't. It was an out of context there. graph that was made by lying about the sources of the data right. and pulling together a bunch of different I supposed correlations, James, but no James, understand. James, James, the moderator can can. Uh, Let's see. You, you might as well just draw a graph in MS the, Paint the and be oh. like, here we go. <laughs> okay, so we'll we'll give a uh, Vosh Jesse last word on that one. Brett oh, yeah. Ringel. Uh, awesome. Oh, yeah. Wait, you said, oh, last word. Oh, real quick. I just want to address something earlier. James mentioned the fact that um, the majority of Chinese immigrants are EB-5 immigrants. That's not true. Apparently, there's less than 7,000 of those people that have those EB-5 immigration things, um, those visas, compared to in 2017 alone, we had 2.9 million Chinese immigrants. So uh, that's unless about, you were that's about 50%, I'd say. <laughs> yeah. Next up, Brenton Langle, thanks for your question, said the Washington State study proves cops hesitate, quote, when they know they're being watched, unquote, and white is easier to see, so it would speed reaction time in a lab. Ooh, something that was really funny that we didn't even get to talk about. One of the largest um, analyses of well, over 100 million stops in the United States showed that black people were less likely to be racially profiled after dark, when it's harder to determine if there's a white person or a black person driving the car. I thought that was very interesting. Over 100 million stops they analyzed. Oh, yeah. Let's, Wait, let's get, it's hold also, on it, one sec. Hold on. After I do want to give, do the give Stryker and also a chance, though. I, I want to give, but I, I want to give Stryker and also, yes. I'll give you a chance to respond to both Destiny's point and the Super Chat. Hold on a second. Yeah, when, I, I, when was, it's, I was digging up the study, the, this study that shows that poor poor whites are less likely to be charged with serious crimes and go to prison than wealthy blacks. Um, so I would t tell you to look at that. Uh, yeah, well, well like they said that when it's when it's dark out, uh, people are, they're less likely to be profiled, um, right. to be stopped, to be what what is the what is the argument here? That racial disparities in between stopping rates between white people and black people tends to go down once it gets later in, on in the night. That when you control for time of stop, which makes it seem like people might be profiling each other based just on how they look rather than any other factor related to a stop. Yeah, I mean, it's also harder to see things like, like uh, what are common reasons for stops, like vehicle uh, equipment issues, right, which is a common reason for stop. These are things that are harder to see. So, yeah, I, I, I'm not. So why would the disparity that. go down? The disparity in race? Yeah. You would yeah, expect I, it to... Sorry, you'd expect it to be the same unless what's you think his that point that black people and white people there's less disparity at night that the cops are yes. racially profiling that the disparity goes down after you can't determine the race of the driver. Also, I'm super curious what goes on with are you the saying car that's you harder to see, see at night, like are you tail lights are you, are you going you out saying, are harder to notice at are, night are, than in the Are you day saying that what like what's what's your argument that black that that white cops can't see black people at night? What, what, wait, 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 wait. Why do you keep specifying <laughs> the race of the cops? We've never let's, made that claim. Let's, because let's that's give, what the actual controversy give, is going on. Give, uh, no, it's not. I want, James, I want to give James a chance to respond. Yeah, no, I, I, the idea that it's it's more difficult to see a black person at night, I, these <laughs> things are... Or, I wait, mean, do you think that's not true? Hold on, no, wait. Do you think that's not true? Do you think it's equally easy to see a white person or a black person at night? Well, what if they smile at you? 
You can well, see you their teeth, well, you right? can't I'm discern their race in the dark. We have Stryker, no, an expert I, identitarian I, here, that's more obsessed with identity politics than any gay white liberal I've ever met in my entire life. Holy that's shit. That's because the left stole identity everything. politics from the right. I'm not a conservative. I'm, a, I'm an oh, identitarian. Damn, at least you admit that it's the left the foundation stole for identity politics. Hey, you sound like a liberal to me, buddy. But I want, I just want it on the the record for my two probably fucking race realists in the, in the argument, which is the funniest part here. Are you guys going to tell me that it's just as easy at night to, to discern race in a car between a white person and a black person? No, I'm saying, I'm, I'm saying that obsessing over, over the race in the case of, of a police stop. They no, can't I mean, answer. They have to asking. Wait, 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 hold on. I actually, I'm, I'm, I'm filibustering this entire debate until James Alsop answers that question. Is it just as easy to see a black and a white person at night in a car? I'm, saying that, if we're talking, I'm saying that if we're talking about police stops, there are so many different factors that go into the decision he to stop answer. someone. Okay, wait, wait, wait. That's one. I'm going to ask one more time, okay? Is it just as yeah, easy you don't, at you don't night? Don't get paternal with me, Destiny. Like, this idea, and again, you guys do this thing where you, you get this study, and we you expect us to take it at face value that, that you are, one, accurately representing the data, two, you not, not editorializing. No, because you guys are bringing up these, these studies that we have not seen, right? So we have no way of verifying whether you're saying what you're saying uh, is true or not. So I'm not going to We're respond you to a your hypothetical. Okay, 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 I'm going to ask the third one. Their argument is that question. you can't okay, see black time. people at can night. You see, yeah, can you see the difference <laughs> between a black and a white person in a car at, at, at night just as easy as oh, you can during no. the day? Or is it a little bit harder at night? You, Does your, your car a, disappear too? Officer, like, with, me, what? You have a headlight? I mean, yes, you can You can see people. And I, what, I mean, this idea... Okay, I'm going to ask a fourth time. Can you tell the difference at night just as easily between a black or a white person driving a car? When you're driving behind them? Sure. Yes. Sure. Okay, cool. That's all I want to hear. Okay, that's all right. All right, that's, yeah. We got what we can out of that. Next, thanks for your question. By the way, <laughs> do want to remind everybody the links of the speakers are in the description in case you did not know that. And next, we have a question from Rodney Falberg asks To all the speakers, why should lay people accept what you say on these topics? You all act like you are experts, but none of you are experts. Uh, let's see, none of you have done professional studies, aren't economists, historians, or experts in any way. Um, well, as part of getting my degree in sociology, I actually had to learn the exact same statistical inference skills that are necessary to participate in the multivariate regressive analyses that we usually use to determine and isolate certain social factors. So I would, I mean, I'm not, I don't have like an MA or anything, but I would argue pretty confidently that I do have some degree of, you know, familiarity with this. Um, but if you want, like, you don't need a degree to understand any of these studies. If you go into the methodology, the actual math they use, it gets pretty complicated. Some of it's above my pay grade as well. But when it comes to actually understanding, like, the arguments being made, it's pretty easy to do. And nothing that Destiny and I have done here has deviated at all from very simple, very commonly held criminological perspectives on the criminal justice system. We haven't done any wacky, like, high IQ 40 chess shit for this yeah i would also like to say that like the fact that you are not familiar with any of these studies is really disappointing these are page one jstor google fucking academic whatever bullshit you want to look up like these are the first things that come up it seems like you would have like a prepared response to at least like the easiest data to find none of these are like super buried or super difficult like these are all like the mainstream widespread academic point of view i mean at least also i can respect that you tried to say that all of academia is fake to try to get off of it since you knew that you couldn't count no you're stuff. mischaracterizing you're me again that's, yeah, that's, that's, what, that's not what i'm saying what, what you are doing and this actually speaks to the speaks uh, to the questioner here I is that not it. only no not only are, are are people the audience being expected to to believe uh the their characterizations of studies at face value which is in and of itself a problem secondly uh we are being being held to their characterizations of a study that that hasn't been verified we have not you know verified or seen these so the idea that that reality as you present it as you distill from a study you select is more valid than the factual i mean you like to say that studies are only valid we, and that, we that, gave that them crime statistics too. that crime statistics aren't valid uh no i mean these crime statistics these are from the fbi these are from from new york city regardless of what we're talking about all of these statistics we have presented are are you can look them up right? a crime but statistic your, your maybe i can use sure. your right. characterization of a study that that's your interpretation. Well, also, that's, that's like maybe, 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 maybe it'd be easier. Let me, let, let, me, let me jump in here on sociology as a fucking discipline. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's the, up, it's the oh, Jews, brother. Yeah. They're all go, over go the place. Look up, no, go look up it's Alan Sokol. Particularly a, S O K A L. We shouldn't have to look them up. You should have done it for this debate. It's your job. Sociology is a fake science. People 
are con- academics, real academics are constantly laughing because they, they send in bogus studies and they always publish them in their journals. Sociology is a load we of horseshit. It's Marxism. Move on, unless <laughs> well, I just want for the actual question for the audience. So studies are like meals. Okay, that's what we're asking. Mm-hmm. You're giving us single ingredients. Okay, to say that a stat and a study are the same thing just isn't how any I'm of hungry. this works. Studies we, we incorporate have... wide varieties of stats into what they in, into their entire project. And then add their ideology to it. So that two plus two equals just, five. I just want to say that is an ideology. I mean, like, like in the absence. I mean, like when you say add an ideology, I mean every study is done with some end in mind. Wait, wait, I mean, we don't, we don't even have to really so, deep. So, maybe James here can have a conversation on instrumentalism in or something. The if you absence. want to talk about like the philosophy so can, can, of doing can, this. In the absence of any. In, all right, we must so move can, on to the next one, person, guys. So can a person who's a race realist be an academic nowadays? Yeah, I just wait, 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 wait. I just want one sentence, if I may. So if my opinion gets you fired from academia, then how am I supposed to have the really quickly? How can we talk about physics when they're this all question, the this, oh, no. I'm, I'm an, okay. Destiny has the last word on this Sorry, one. We'll wait, may I? Next one. We have my, to do that. My I discipline to, was you attacked. You have to keep going. My um, discipline was attacked. I'm, I'm hurt. I'm if you hadn't got a chance to respond to it, I'll give you a quick response. One sentence was... without evidence that a study's methodology is flawed, claiming it is flawed is the definition of feels over reels. That's we it. We showed you all kinds of studies and you guys just ignored them. All kinds. So. All kinds Next of data, up. all kinds Thanks of studies. SH, you guys just SH. Thanks for them. your question. Said bad moderation. Appreciate that. We keep Not our true. critics close though, so leave them alone, mods. And I will. I appreciate the accountability. Manchester Police. Thanks for your question. Said systematic systems that govern everything from jury bias to politicians' choices are not able to affect academic studies. The systematic powers of Whitey cannot enter the university door. What? I don't think, I don't think that was an argument. So yeah, you can sure. probably move to the next one if you'd like to. Next up, let's see. I didn't understand it. Uh, let's see. Quote: uh, Brady Constant Costins. Thanks for your question. Says, "Color of crime." Quote unquote. There is, a, there is little bias because victim surveys show that the color of the criminal in a violent act and the federal data is a close. A close? It is close. I think he means is close. close. Yeah, okay. no, that, that, is, uh, that is well established. I think they actually conceded that point very early on that blacks do commit more crime than whites at an at a extremely disproportionate rate. Um, but to, to answer, I think, what that previous super chatter was getting at in terms of bias in academia... I mean, this is this is something oh, that is worth let's discussion. Get, let's get let's. I don't I don't know if I want to. It's this one might go for a long time. Uh, but the was, specificity is right. It was well, so nobody like, conceded that point. It was never debated. It was never. I don't remember talking. Well, no, you, you, you guys, you, I, I do remember you did we, admit that blacks commit more crime. Yeah, they let's, did. Yeah, but that's, we're not conceding or admitting that. That's like a fact that we all agree on. It's like good. Yeah, it's not a concession. Good. Like, you think the sun is out in the day? What you're arguing? Oh, it is. You conceded that. Like black people commit more crime. But somehow nice. the fact that they go to prison at higher rates and have all these issues with I feel the same way about men. Racism. Men commit more crime, Stryker, but they also look get up worse the word sentences. Disproportionate, it'll help you for your next debate, okay? Yeah. Okay. Next up, Matthew Steele, thanks for your question. This is for Stryker and also asks, do you think the most important ideal virtue in the U.S. is improving human life or making money? And definitely have to give them the last word on this. Go ahead, also <laughs> uh, Eric. I'll say it's very clear. It's, a, it's about improving the human condition and human life. It's not about money. Money, yeah. uh, people, some people say time is money, but I say money is time. People need more leisure time. They need workers' rights. They need to fight for the working people, especially the white working people who are under siege from both the right and the left. That's why you should fucking join with us if you're in that situation. You're a centrist? You are hated for your race. And additionally, you have no rights because of your class. So this is something that we believe. We're not conservatives. We are nationalists and we are third positionists. So... Gotcha. Fuck the communists and fuck the capitalists. Next, John L. 1319, appreciate your question, said, can you ask who the white leaders are since us black people always need to be led? This is to the nationalist guys. Uh, how about Louis Farrakhan? How about uh, various historical figures? I mean, is Louis Farrakhan <laughs> a black community leader? I, I mean, mean, what's the answer to that? Not you have to give, really? I have to keep, to be fair, I have to give them the last word. Mecca Wing Zero, thanks for your question for both sides. Asking, do you believe the criminal justice system system is sexist due to the overwhelming majority of arrests being men? Yeah, yeah well, 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure yeah. That's been proven. Actually, we might even have that in our own data that when you control for um, all other factors, you know, past convictions, criminal history, all of that stuff, that men do receive worse sentences, um, especially when it comes to think from departure from the guidelines than women do. Yeah. yeah way worse. Like judges, because yeah. they think men are more threatening, which you could argue they are, but obviously the disproportionate just representation like bears out. Yeah. Just like with blacks. Oh, just like with blacks, it's just disproportionate. Just disproportionate bias. Thank you. Hey! That's all. Awesome. Yeah. You guys are on board. Blacks, got blacks you. are awesome. disproportionately Another concession. put in prison because they're disproportionately violent, just like men are. Wait, that end of story. End correct. of the debate. They Close are the disproportionately book. violent. That is true. True. They're also okay. disproportionately put in. They're also disproportionately put in prison. Wait, cool. Just, but then we're not arguing about whether they're disproportionately violent. We're arguing whether they're disproportionately violent. So these guys are arguing the like the Jared Taylor position. We're arguing like the position that was listed in the email. Maybe your caretaker should have read it to you if you were talking about coming into this. Taylor over here. All right, next. Mecca Wings, well, we got that one. Rugal Migdal quotes Vosh saying, if blacks move to Africa to be among blacks, that's fine. Same with whites and wherever they want to move to, unquote. So Africa for Africans confirmed? No, everywhere for whoever wants to go there. I don't know. Who makes that decision? Oh, wait. Yeah, different we're countries have control of their own immigration policy. We're arguing, yeah, yeah, but we're arguing broadly what my ethical principle is. And what I'm saying is, I think it's nice when individuals get to move to whatever part of the world they'd like to move in. We get one life, there's one planet, there are a lot of beautiful things to see, beautiful people to meet. I think it's nice that people should be able to travel the world, experience what they wish to experience. Yeah, that's something there's, I There was a Gallup what, 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 three what years ago that shows those? that not a single country in the world has a majority that supports open borders. Damn it, so and not a single... Whoa, open borders. are you kidding? Yes. Oh, not a single country in the world not is, a single is majority, anarcho -sin Not a single wait, 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 majority wait, wait, wait. in the world you've, oh, of you've hit voters it. You've hit supports it. open borders. The capitals support open borders. It's almost as like... You, as you like to quote Cato Institute studies on immigration... Why are we allowing him to just completely... Wait, it's almost like I'm an anarchist and there are no giant anarchist like anarchist syndicalist like that's because an anarchism it's almost like i have political it's almost like i have position. political ideals it's for mentally ill people that haven't happened yet well, that's what anarchism it, is it's a philosophy for mentally ill rich kids if, okay. I, if I could that's jump in why here. you've been very no stable this debate support. you've been putting your best foot forward for your yeah, own i'm not making a good argument for your i think even people want closed borders all over the world if i was if i was all up i'd be pretty mad i got paired up with you to be honest no, Next I mean, that, that, we, that's I do have to give, not going to work. I give, could, to be fair, I, I've got to give, at some point, I've got to give Vosh the last word because it was a, an objection toward him. Well, if I could, if I could make a statement on this, I, I think it is very interesting that the anarchist position on, on open borders and open migration is the exact same as, as global capital. That should tell you something. Secondly, Vosh's Wait, position on, on the ethics of uh, open migration, free movement of people is, uh, take it, does not hold any regard for the will of the people in the countries that are being immigrated to, right? It, it so places if, a lot since of since I'm getting the last word here to the desire of the people from the third from the world, but it doesn't it doesn't take into account the wishes of the people, say in Europe or say in the United States, who time and time again uh, in polling well, express that they are opposed to immigration. They've had Blacks enough. Blacks in South Africa don't want yeah, so, for, so, so, right, so several several things. First of all, what he just said is untrue vis-a-vis -vis immigration data. It's more complicated than he's making it out to be. Second of all, I'm pretty sure that capitalists don't generally support the abolition of private property. That I, maybe they've changed that. Maybe Goldman Free Sachs is pushing people, for that. Free movement of, Shh, movement of people. And third of all, when I'm making We're moral prescriptions, I can make them with regards to the fact that there are people in different countries who disagree with me. For example, I don't think that raping and enslaving women is okay. But the people in Saudi Arabia probably have some different views on me with regards to that particular gendered interaction. And to have somebody say, well, that's not very nice to the Saudi Arabian people, it doesn't really land home with me. My moral principles exist opposite whatever weird demographic polling I can bring up to justify who the fuck, who any the fuck conceivable. Who are you to tell argument. Saudis how to live? Next, we got to give them the, the last word. Next, uh, Balthazar, thanks savior? for your question, said to all four, do you love black people? Well, yes, I, if I could take this first, and I think I that what we are doing, it, what you'll need one sentence. Stryker, they have the real compassionate position towards. Well, the, people, the position that Stryker and I are advocating for actually gives agency uh, yeah. to to blacks and to others. And what Vouch just said right there is actually very illuminating. I uh, in in that he is is attempting love. to to enforce his Black morality, people. his his liberal. Vouch, you got to stop being a child. Liberal here. colonialism. He, he's attempting to yeah exactly to impart his liberal uh, colonialist mindset. 
on everyone uh, across the world, on Saudi Arabians, on blacks. He's attempting to, to uh, ascribe his own liberal values onto these other people. This is a very important point. And it He's speaks to, it speaks to this has why- has nothing to do with loving black to people. Why, yes, it does, because it speaks to why you, despite claiming that there is institutional bias and racism in this system, then pivot away and, and run away from the discussion of what to do about it and, and are afraid of the answer that would, that would remove, remove the possibility of white uh, oppression or white bias from impacting blacks, which is having two separate systems, right? Well, so Saudi, you, you are, it's right. liberal colonialism at its finest. What Saudi Eric, Arabians do, do in Saudi Arabia on, is Do that... you love black people? They don't, they don't, because they don't, they don't love black people. That's their, Neither that's their crippling you. flaw. That's their you want to control black people. heroic weakness. You want to they don't love black, black people. people. That's how it is. I would also make, like fun, to make out... fun of them like you do with, uh, with uh, Jesse Lee Peterson. That's well, another well, thing. Well, making fun of one black people? You coon. That's Whoa. what you want to do. All right. We That's what you guys like. You were the one earlier that claimed you had like token us. figures. You literally so, used that expression. You treat them like some right. kind of for real, for real. For real. We're not like we're not going to get the channel in trouble. Don't say anything like that again. I don't think they. I, I meant it in a certain much. context, though. Uh, <laughs> I meant it in a certain context. <laughs> he was using the mean version of this. This is Tom. like, don't do it again. All right. So, next one. Appreciate your question. This one comes in from the Red Elephants said, Let's oh, see. God. They said blacks are more likely to be charged longer for drugs because they're more likely to sell in the open and more likely to have a previous criminal history. There are many studies that conclude this. Okay, yeah. So shouldn't he have linked one? This I'm sorry, hold on. I sorry, I hear this talking about so many times. All these researchers do all of these studies on all on, on all of this crime related stuff. And you think that none of them, not a single one thought. I wonder if past convictions might have been the difference here. Nobody controlled for that. They clearly do. They explicitly do in every study that Vaj and I have brought to this conversation. The fact that you think you've got some massive gotcha by asking one of literally the most obvious fucking questions of all time, I think is very telling of your position. Yeah, I also want to say that I've looked over these data points specifically. And while it is true that there are corollary factors like black people are more likely to sell in the open and black people are more likely to smoke marijuana um, in public rather than in private, these uh, statistical factors accounted for a very small percentage deviation from their actual uh, arrest rate, whereas they're arrested four times as often. So you can't just prove like this is a correlative factor, that's a correlative factor. You have to prove it accounts for a four times discrepancy, which in the case of that data, and I know because I've looked at those studies, it most certainly does not. Okay. Next up, thanks for your, do, forgive me, did we get a response from both sides? Uh, or wait, that was actually, wait, that was targeting Destiny Bosch, I'll give him the last word on that one. Matthew Steele, thanks for your question. Striker and also, also said, do you think that if Black Lives Matter protesters carried AR-15s while they peacefully protested, that their Second Amendment rights would be respected by police? Yes, this happened uh, last month where Black, uh, Black Lives Matter, I don't know if they were officially BLM, but uh, a, a group of armed Black protesters escorted a, on state, state property, by the way, and I believe it was Michigan. Uh, they had an armed demonstration and yeah. they, they were unmolested by law enforcement. Right, That's not also- data. Like, the, the new Black Panthers. It's not data. Oh my the God. New, Do you need a the new, study the to new prove Black Panthers, what you're seeing new, in front of your eyes? The new Black Panthers <laughs> have armed demonstrations all the time and they're not fucking stopped by the police. So, I mean, the new Black Panthers are actually considered by Zionist groups uh, to be <sighs> a hate group, quote unquote, by so, the, the ADL. So they're allowed to, to carry their guns. The BLM group you're referring to was actually a group of paid actors who are evoking the aesthetic of BLM. They did a big apology tour on Twitter well, for it because I'm they were doing stolen that, valor. Mr. Yeah. Um, I need a study for how that. How about for data? How about Wait, the fact that I like it. you bring up the Black Panthers when it comes to weapons control, when the only time the NRA historically supported more gun control was when the Black Panthers were marching in the 60s. No, no, no. There are other factors, bro. There are the NRA, other factors, the NRA, bro. The NRA currently supports increased gun control in, in terms uh, of uh, background checks and bump stocks. So that's a lie. Yeah. Right. Wait, generally, Next. they passed massive oh, gun general, control oh, education. Not, not Wait, gun control Ronald Reagan, the pro gun, no, the pro gun right. president as a governor right. in your California, passed gun control right. legislation. No, you're, you're, you're wrong. I mean, you're wrong. The so. NRA currently supports yeah. increased gun control in terms of uh, universal background checks and uh, bump stocks, which then they the argument would be that ago. they supported disproportionate gun control with regards to BLM. To yeah, but that's not the I argument gotta, you made. What you exactly said was the only time they they supported gun control was when it was That's what Destiny said. Do all white people look the same to you? Oh, okay. Well, black black people That's what I thought. like the the NRA is is obsessed with having black spokesmen and black members and all that stuff. They also support like uh, expanding uh, gun gun rights to minorities, and they have programs dedicated to that. That's the NRA. 
So this is just a ridiculous, like, made up. Well, we'd have to find some data shit. on it. Then talk about that. Okay. Yeah. About go on the NR website and look up all the black people they have fucking at their. They put at, black at, people at, on their at, website. At their... There can't be any racial bias. Well, it clearly shows that they at least aren't against uh, black people having guns as long as it's legal. The problem is that black maybe they're okay with black conservatives guns. having guns, but they weren't okay with black socialists having guns. That's that, I think you might keep, might be confusing that for how the, the FBI and the police are uh, were investigating Shahamish, where the white people came out. What are you talking? Wait, 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 wait. What are you talking about? Uh, from black rioters, you might be confusing it for do that. You th- wait, see, do you think saying I think you the, might be talking about is this n- like a, a gateway to a non sequitur? They harass white people. Having a gun in this country as a white man with an opinion is basically uh, demanding that the government come after. Wait, I have a gun, multiple guns, yeah. and I have very yeah, strong but you support the system, though. That's the difference. By right? being anti-capitalist? Wait, is he an anarchist yes, or whatever? Or is he, a- a- yes, he, is, he is a capitalist. He, he is a capitalist who pretends to be a communist. This is That's, this is the same. You. It's the same uh, Nazbel argument every time. Even if you're anti-capital, anti-private well, why, property, anti-everything, if you support immigration, it automatically makes you a capitalist. They don't give a That's fuck about class the issues. They care opinion. about race. You you and the we, Cato Institute let's, have the same let's opinion go back on it. To the means- original question. So the original question, though, uh, I can give you the last word if you'd like to. Which that original question was from Matthew Steele asking about black protesters or BLM protesters with their AR-15s. And it sounds like you said that they, you think that they would be yeah. respected by police if you feel one, one that. Last thing, one one last thing. Do you think if white people were rioting, burning down cities, killing people, shooting police officers, do you really think Who's it would be allowed to go on? shooting police officers? Oh, you didn't wait, see how that? Long, wait, wait, Louis wasn't it in order? Two, federal, two police federal police shot by uh, BLM yeah. Yeah. in yeah. Los Angeles. Was there a group people? of white people? Dude, and, like, if, if a group of white people were behaving that property? way, they would put the army on the street. Remember, this already and we happened. know this to be true this because happened. we saw this with Charlottesville. And you're when... wrong. What are you talking about? Charlottesville? Where, where were the bunnies at? Charlottesville? Where were the bunnies at? Do you know who started the riots? Do you know who started the riots? We're not interested in Charlottesville conspiracy theories, dude. Just hold on. Okay, I've got everybody on mute. Just to reset for a second. Okay, so... That last question was Jane, on I'm so AR-15s. Sorry. It's okay. I appreciate everybody's passion. Uh, so we're just coming back to it now. The AR-15s, Black Lives Matter, if they were carrying the AR-15s, we, I think we got way past that. We're on something totally new now. But I think black people should be able to have guns. It's cool. Black Panther Party was cool. Yeah, my answer. Next. Uh, well, that, the question though, originally for Stryker and also, if you guys want, you get, the last word is yours. Yeah, I, I think you can look at the treatment of of white peaceful political protesters, uh, and like you, will, you will see yeah, exactly, and you will see that the agitation uh, in the case of Charlottesville being a great example, agitation came from the left. It came from Antifa, and uh, what was the end result of that? It was dozens. I think you know, with Ram and, and everyone else, what dozens. What does this of, have to do with the question? We're answering Dude, I, the I've question. Get, we are comparing uh, apples to apples here. When white people went to peacefully demonstrate, we got cracked down by both the local cops and the anarchists, and the, there was a Black Lives Matter contingent there. None of them went to prison. This is just no. like a he, lot he's, of white nationalists. And when BLM protest today, the National Guard was called. Congratulations! Like I don't know yeah. what point you're and trying how many, to say. And Next how up. many arrests were made? Our, our dear moderator asks. Actually? A simple question, and you're like, well, the 1982 lynching of the black man, the Ku Klux Klan, was actually not you the person who initiated force. You're, like, you're, you're just getting we, nervous. You're just getting we, uh, nervous get because we're getting You never nervous. talk about the actual Jack, issue, ever. Let's, let's go to the... So this question is an interesting one. James Bond, thanks for your question, asked. They said, police spend more time in violent areas, and thus, isn't it more likely that they would find other crime in these violent areas? Yes, it's been accounted for. That is definitely true. It is also literally the first thing these people... Account- account for when they're conducting these studies like let's yeah. give it well and we'll give eric and uh eric and also the last word i mean you no no amount of sociology can can talk away the fact that there's more dead bodies showing up in black neighborhoods no one's like, arguing it's that. that simple it can no explain it though yeah. well here's the thing if there's more dead bodies showing up in your neighborhood because of homicide then it's very obvious that more more people in your neighborhood are going to go away to prison and get the death penalty. This is, I mean, you're I mean, just defending just anti-intellectualism. Like, fuck common, the data, it's not fuck analysis. Intellectualism to lie. Like, I mean, you're you're lying. Intuition okay? says, like, like if yeah, you come go on. outside right now and you were to look across your city, uh, two plus okay? two is five. The horizon is right. flat. All right. Now I'm just saying, I've yeah, been in airplanes where I've never seen curvature. Hey, of the earth, that's okay? true. Oh. And I've looked with my own eyes. Okay. That's I love, true. I love how the flat, the 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 the, the people who are the flat earth theorists, the people that are ideologues here that are doing this out of a religious belief or people like you who no matter what data i show you you guys will never take the racialist position no matter what data we show you 
So what is the point of this? You have an ideology. You have a fixed religious belief in the equality of all races. That we support it's with a belief data. That's wrong. It's a belief that's wrong. The Chinese have already just proven it in their universities because they don't okay. have these political pressures to give the system what it wants. And show the studies. Is, the official ideology of the United States of America is anti-racism. They are, they're laying Black Lives Matter banners. Every question from a moderator goes the same way. in Asia. So give me a break. That's the official ideology of the U.S. government. E you push it. Every single time you it. talk, you go on the weirdest tangent. That's that. You know, that's I've that. never know. been killed by know. a black man. Uh, like I don't know. The evidence is feeling pretty strong. If ever. Do, do black people murder anyone? I mean, I've never seen a murder yeah, by a true. black person. I yeah, think I a really know. important question that Striker needs to address is, why do you believe that white people were created by Yakub? Yeah. True! Why? Because, hold on, because Avash here agrees with some Cato studies, which means he subscribes to all their ideologies, and the only people that you could support, that, or that, that say that you are supporting your arguments are fucking Nation of Islam well, people. Do you, does I, that I mean you also, buy into their I believe white people well? are I'm people, super people striker. I want to hear you talk if, about these, YouTube these, and all the really, creation really, of white people. We really do. We do. If the, if if these corny, okay, one last second. I want to give you guys the last word, Striker and James. If these corny little gotchas are going to be the game, I could just bring up the fact that both of you are admitting that blacks are more violent and committing more crime. No, and say, well, that's that's actually Wait, my black people do commit more crime and, in the United States than white people at the moment. That's not yeah, 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 so talking Good. about solutions. We've got a, I think that's the most salient point here. To be fair, I do have to give the last word to Stryker and Gene. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I think you know you you do little gotcha jokes about about how many whites are killed by blacks. Well, uh, the FBI data shows us that a white person is twenty seven times as likely to be killed by a black than a black is to be killed by a white. That is according wow. to FBI data. So, I mean, is, again, you all minimizing... no analysis, just individual data points that you do not tie together yeah, with data analysis. Is do, data, do is data is irrelevant. Do you need? Data is irrelevant. That is so is fantastic, Striker. I appreciate well, that's what you you're being saying. open with you're this. Saying this that idea... doesn't matter if it doesn't have some sociology no, you're ideology. Not providing, you're, not you're, not you're, providing you're, you're not providing, you're not providing data. Fine. You're providing stats Numbers, out of context. The statistics of black crime are on paper, they're well known. What context minimizes the fact that whites are 27 times as white people? Wait, 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 can I appeal to the moderator really quickly? Wait, wait, really quickly, James, do you not feel that every time you ask a question, they take it to like pull out their little black book and start responding, like reciting the same fucking argument? Can we actually like respond to the questions the super chatters were asking? Like, let's see. So what I have to do is I have to give Stryker and also the last word, and then we got to go to this next question. I wonder if it'll be about the question. Yeah, well, and this idea that our- I'll read the original question. The original question- were we on the, uh, this wasn't on the AR 15s for Black Lives Literally, Matter, was it? Literally, no one knows right now, James. You're going to have to find it because these guys sure as fuck aren't responding to the question. <laughs> Yeah, well, according to you the, guys, the idea data is irrelevant. If we don't respond with the response you want, that our response is somehow right. invalid, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, that's it's not how discussion. it works. We have, we have the data, we have the crime rates, we have the stats, we have them broken down by race, and you guys just snark about it and just pretend it's not happening. It's not real. Like, we I mean, have 1350. We're not owned. We're not owned. We have 1350. <laughs> but is 1350 yeah. real? Is it? Is it? Now we're arguing for it. <laughs> Snarking, <laughs> snarking about it doesn't mean that black people don't commit far more interracial crime than <laughs> the reverse. <laughs> so what is? what are you laughing at? I like feel like you literally came to this debate and like you have a folder titled like research for debate and it's full of like rage comics right now. Like that's what you sound like, Striker. Do you understand? Right. I mean, you're not even addressing what we're saying. I mean, this is just, I mean, you're, just, just you're not addressing the super chat. All right. All right. Let's next. Jonathan Y. Wu. Uh, let's see. Do we, did you feel like you had the, uh, yeah, go ahead. I can go give ahead. you we're the fine. last word if you, if you feel like you didn't have it there. Cause no, I know that was kind of an interchange. Hey, go ahead. It's fine. Move on to the next one. Jonathan Y. Woo, thanks for your question. Said, are Stryker and also uncomfortable that me and my Han Chinese ancestry are every bit as American as they are? I don't really care. I mean, is that is that some gotcha for some like paleocon? I don't give a shit. <laughs> I, I, I say good for the Chinese. The Han race is, is ascendant. I applaud them. It's a very consistent civilization. I think that the Chinese government is actually fighting for its own race and its own race's uh, existence. And I think that's why they will eventually destroy America in an international conflict, whether passive, cold, or hot. And, uh, and this man sending in that super chat will renounce his American citizenship and go live in a prosperous China. I mean, that's just how it is. I'm glad he has another country to go to. Okay. Yeah, and, and white people of... don't have a place to go after this. Right. I thought we have all of Europe. I thought Europe was a, was a yeah. Place. And look at the demographics there. Good. And then we'll do it to China too, baby. We'll import the third world into China yeah. too. Nowhere will be that. safe. They're we'll find you. we'll find your great grandparents' fucking bedrooms, and we'll import the third world into there too. Hey, okay. You said it. That's <laughs> the third great the dream. Mask off. Mask off. 
They can't. But tell the funny him, thing tell, is, tell the funny thing is, they're so live. they're so addled. They don't know I'm making a joke. They actually think that's what we believe. They can't every, actually tell. Every co- every comment you make is the the, the nervous Wojak with the smiling mask. Like that's every every stupid joke that? you make. What so it's hard fuck? to tell. Yeah, I mean, you, you want to talk about like comics? It's like that's like the haha. He didn't know that I was pretending to be retarded. It's like all right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've got to move. Okay, got to move on. I'll give you guys the last word. They do. They, they're admitting it. They think that's actually that's how like black and white it is. It's like a child's view of politics. Well, if they look at the data point that they yeah, have. yeah, these guys are so stupid for taking it. <laughs> their data word. point. I mean, come on, Vosh bad, destiny bad, oh. frowny face. I have huh. here this study. You took me at my word. Ha ha ha. Let's that's fucking, that's a, no. I feel oh, like this is like a massive Turing test. Like people put a bunch of Markov chains together and Stryker's entire personality was generated off of 4chan posts. He's like an amalgamation of every stupid fucking meme on Destiny, that fucking board. Why do, you, <laughs> why do you keep doubling down on personal attacks and refuse? Yeah. This guy literally called shows. both of us faggots multiple times and we're the ones making the- I, That wasn't a personal attack. Not hear are you proud to be LGBT? No, what are you talking right, about, dude? Are you no, serious? Are you LGBT go, or not? Let's not go there. Let's- Let's we have, we've got a question from Insane Hermit says, do Destiny and Vosh not allow blacks to separate because they want continuous race war and exploiting of whitey? This is what I yeah. mean. Like these people's perceptions of our beliefs are fucking insane. What are you talking about? Well, so the clear answer is I don't think that the combination of blacks and whites would lead to a perpetual race war. Um, I mean, if black people and white people want to go off and like make their own little like you can go move in with white friends in a house or you can go move in with black friends in the house. Or you can go to another country, I guess, if you want. Uh, but no, I'm, I mean, I don't think either of us are interested in enforcing some <laughs> racial separation of like stores or properties or, or something like that. I don't the think prob- there's going to be a perpetual problem, race wars as a result. With, wait, it was for wait, wait, please, we can't do every eight minute yeah, tangent. I had the last word on that. So you can share. Yeah, well, I have the last word, question? actually. Oh, sorry, okay. Vash, yeah, go ahead. yeah, all I want to say is yeah people should be able to live with one that's it that's it it's so simple i don't want to force anyone together or anyone apart i just don't want people to be able to discriminate based on race very simple next just watch one two four this we've only got maybe time for another one or two i think one of you guys is on the east coast right so we just watch one two four thanks for your question said destiny stop and frisk served as a deterrent not an illegal gun confiscation program that's why quote only about 750 guns, unquote, were found, but gun crime went down. That's a really interesting question because I literally, we didn't get to talk about this. I had a study from 2017 called to stop and frisk deter crime, evidence from the aftermath of Floyd v. City of New York. And interestingly enough, it didn't. Gotcha. And Zephyr, let's see. Says Zephyr says, Striker, don't talk about blacks wanting separation. We don't want that crap. Don't you dare try to speak for us. Striker, do you... Uh, I, you know. I, I will give you this. I am just talking about black people I know that I talk to, uh, historical black leaders, what they wanted, Marcus Garvey. Uh, you can look at Malcolm, the greatest black men in, in American history. Many of them agreed with my position on this. Okay, The Black Panther Party, for example, they were very, very skeptical of the Weather Underground, even though the Weather Underground, which is all Jewish and all liberals, white liberals, wealthy white liberals and Jews, were the, made up the Weather Underground. They invented the concept almost of white privilege. They had these struggle sessions and uh, uh, atoning for your privilege and things like that. The Black Panthers before that were aligned with the Young Patriot Organization, which was an unapologetically white working class movement of Southerners who used the Confederate flag. And you can find uh, pictures online of young patriots who were unapologetic racialists, basically. They were Dixie nationalists with Black Panthers and their flags are together. So black people and white people historically have come together uh, with this point of view to fight the system together, okay? These guys, on the other hand, white liberals, they don't have any interaction with black people. I mean, maybe this is one of those, like, uh, maybe an, a, a black exception, but black people don't like white liberals. Should I go, when like, make a meal during move, this? When, when white liberals move into their neighborhoods, they understand that their neighborhood's about to get gentrified. When they see Whole Foods open up, they understand that means the rent is going to go up. So I'm just saying, like, let, let's talk to black people about this. This is an exception to the rule, but I noticed one thing. He didn't have any word, kind words for Destiny and Bausch. He just said, hey, you don't speak for me either, which is fine. I don't pretend to. They do. I don't. Wait, I don't. Wait, wait, wait. I don't give a fuck if black people. We're not yeah, I don't give a fuck if right black now. people agree with the arguments that I make because I don't base the legitimacy of my arguments on a racialist perspective of subjective truth. I argue so if, for what I argue because I think it's correct are, and because these, I think it's right. But these policies you, you, you support are going to impact black people. Everyone. 
because I think my ethics are applicable. If you to pull everyone. police out of the ghetto, black people will die by the hundreds. In right, fact, if I if I was moving, an unironic white supremacist, right I would agree and amplify with you. Oh, you're gonna pull police out of black neighborhoods? Or Wait, when did I say police? that? Police. Did I make that talked about pulling police out of aren't black you, neighborhoods. Aren't you? Aren't you an anarchist? About. Whoa, you they, like, wait, was he an anarchist or a liberal? Which one, Striker? Does he change like good based on what Good you're question. Fucking there's a lot of fluence. There's a lot of fluency there. So, are you an anarchist or a liberal, Vosh? Do you support defunding the police? I mean, wait, is defunding the police the same as pulling police out of black neighborhoods? Well, if the police have no money, who's going to police them? I didn't say. Do you think defund means zero money? That would be abolish the. That's police. what that's what the people protesting are saying. Yes, yeah, so we don't want police. We want to abol well, no, that's an anarchist abolish. Abolish the police means zero the money. Defund the, the police anarchist, means take the away their budgets by a right. Well, right. The, are the police going to do it as like a weekend volunteer thing if you defund? Are them? Are you like, sure well, you're well, equipped to have that? Maybe this can be yeah, the next there you conversation. Go. Okay. I don't think you know, like any of the talking yeah. points to anything how to do. Here comes the police. Okay. Well, okay, so the actual response is, in case you're wondering, defund the police usually refers to allocating different portions of the police budget to other services, the things that the police okay. should be involved in. So, for instance, right. if you've got, like, a mentally ill guy walking down the street and screaming, it probably shouldn't be the police that are called in, which probably be somebody specially equipped to deal all with, right. like, special Well, that's going to affect black people. That's what people. defund the police means. Don't say, all oh, right, because you didn't know that five seconds ago before I explained it to you. people's lives, yeah. and, and, and you see... How the police now? I don't know what you're responding to right now. They have explaining what it meant. You Ferguson clearly didn't know. I know you want to move on to the next point. The murder point, rate goes sky yeah, high as soon good. as the police cool. keep a hands-off position. That's, and right. that's good. Good thing none of us people. are talking about that. Cool. Okay. Next. Glad we all agree. Let's see. I'm trying to remember who's the uh, original question for. Okay, so uh, Striker and also the original objection was to you guys. If you guys want to respond, you can. Yeah, um, I, I would just like to make the point that when he says that uh, he, he doesn't want Striker or I speaking for black people, uh, that's fine. I, we're, neither, neither of us are claiming to. Uh, what we are proposing is a solution, though, that would be that has been endorsed by by uh, black leaders in the past and would be uh, preferential or would would result in, in a better situation uh, for blacks. And I would also make the point that this does not only apply to criminal justice, but this applies to economics as well. Uh, we saw the the study recently of Amazon workplaces, and this was released that that the more racially diverse an Amazon workplace is. This is not true. I went over this data on stream. Everything you're about to okay, say you, is completely you, 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 did, you did your study about this, I'm sure. Amazon um, did its own study. No, I just, no, no, no. I just, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. I didn't do my own study. I just looked at theirs because right. none Amazon's, of you read past the headline. Amazon's internal sure. data found that more diverse workplaces are less likely to unionize. And so if you're interested in in the well-being of blacks and economic well-being is a part of that, then, uh, right. Well, obviously. He isn't. Then, then, he then wants one, to impose his own gay not... liberalism on other Jesus people. Jesus Christ. Right. Not have You're the same politics. Oh God! As he's Amazon. basically an imperialist. Actually, he's a, a gay imperialist. imperialist. US imper liberal, gay imperialist, yes. liberal. Yes. Yep. Am I Jew? Wait, have they called me Jewish this debate, or is that another debate? I'm not calling you Jewish. Okay, but you have. Okay, you I'm are just fulfilling sure. their neocon <laughs> agenda. <laughs> hey, just say, so I just want to impose up, my I, worldview, my European oriented worldview, which is what liberalism is. So I went. I went over this because I saw. People that don't want it around the world you That's are what you, you said, are so you don't care just so you know i just want you to know want. when you grandstand you like that you people, come you off what, as pathetic you as care, any motherfucker what, who fucking you don't care what, poll, you okay? don't care what people of color think oh about my god your let me know god when this guy is done worldview. You if just you cared what people of color think, you wouldn't be citing like incredibly niche positions inside their community. You think all black people are represented by the nation of Islam? What a stupid you think, fucking you think point. Black, wait, what do you think black sec. people think of transgenderism? Other stupid niche. You want to talk niche issues? That's what this you is, guys. Well, he for. he actually wait, can't wait, stick to a to topic. Talk? Wait, I'm sorry, no, moderator. If I may, I just because out of the uh, responsibility to the audience. So I didn't like do a study on that Amazon article. I just read the article, which Vincent James, who was the person who I saw that through, didn't bother to do. The racial diversity was one of twelve characteristics associated associated with being less likely to unionize. And one of the reasons that was posited is because um, uh, uh, Whole Foods with greater uh, racial diversity tend to be in larger cities, which have larger amounts of racial diversity, and larger cities tended to have, you guessed it, higher minimum wages, which means that there was less of an economic incentive for those groups to unionize. In fact, a follow-up study that I looked at showed that racial minorities were actually more likely to push for unionization in many industries. So everything that he just said about that was completely wrong. Again, all I had to do was look like past the headline. Well, well, that's fine, but, but actually, I actually must, have a study. Hold on. Because, I, because give, I want to. We, we, we are a lot of points. So we got to. really lying about this. Read it, then come lie. back. We put studies on a pedestal in this in this debate, and that's uh, <laughs> fair. So here is a study hey, from YouTube Stanford videos. University Racial Diversity and Union Organizing in the U.S. 1999 through, through 2008. Um, quote from the app, the introduction. Does racial diversity make it hard to form a union? Most work by industrial relations scholars. Sales and Strauss, 1953. Dunlop, 1958. Labor sociologists. Nelson, 2001. Kloss in 2003. Fantasia and Voss, 2004. Lichtenstein, 2002. Presumes that it does. So the body of work on, on unionization sure, Lincoln. and I'll sociology. Take a look. I'll take a look. 
backs up our position, which okay, is then, that then diversity. Link it. That disagrees words. with the information that I have seen, but please do link it. I'd be interested well, we in have reading study. it. Yeah, so, so please link it. Next. Thanks for, let's see. Oh, wait, okay. actually, wait, I'm curious. Actually, wait, for what James just said, I'm really curious. Why? Why were um, unions less like, likely to form? People of different races have less in common and are thus less likely to create a union. Yeah, couldn't, that, couldn't that just reality. be racist? Wait, okay, I'm just curious. Well, I just, because I thought it was funny because I just looked it up. I'm, it's funny you didn't read the rest of your abstract. So the study finds that more diverse establishments are less likely to see successful organizing attempts. Little evidence is found, however, that this is because workers are less interested in voting for unions. Instead, the organizers of more diverse units are more likely to give up before such elections are held. Furthermore, this higher Why quit rate, do they give up? Wait, let's let them keep finish. reading. This higher quit rate can be explained best by considering that other organizations involved in the organizing drive. In particular, employers are more likely to be charged with unfair labor practices when the unit in question is more racially diverse. This effect persists when the study controls for heterogeneity among industries, unions, and regions. Crazy. So a more diverse way workplace maybe doesn't find it necessary to unionize. That's insane. That's that your I own said. fucking abstract, your own fucking abstract, you go, oh my God, you're smiling right now, but you're dying <sighs> on the inside, James. No, it's okay, no, dog. No, what, I know that feeling. I've been there before. It happens every yeah. now and then. But they still like that study, yeah. though. What, yeah. what, you're link, do, what, you're doing, what you're doing is, one, you're contradicting the body of work that is, has been done on the subject, uh, okay. which, by the way, there's reading your right abstract, there. dog. Yeah. Right, and you can look at the body of work that, that supports that. Maybe um, you should cite the body of work then instead of the abstract. Link it. Well, secondly, well, it's not with the secondly, 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 that is an inference they're making based on, based on the data they find, which, by the way, demonstrates that more diverse workplaces find it more difficult to unionize. And so they are because trying they don't to need explain... To. No, they don't what? need to? You think oh. the more diverse workplaces don't need to unionize? Not Why? as much as... Had, that's what your abstract claims. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what your abstract claims. It says it's more likely, point, to, be charged, the, 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 more likely the, to be charged with unfair The relevant thing we're debating here is that more diverse places have less union organized. But it, right. well, no, that's no, you, the you, only you thing need to learn whether that. it's because of the diversity. Yeah. We, must, we must move on oh. to the next one. I am trying to remember who that one was for, that last one. I think it was for Stryker and also if you want to, it's hard to short, tell sometimes, isn't it? Short and pithy last word from you guys, you can, and then we'll go to this last one for the night. Right. Okay. So Vosh would say that he said this, he said that the reason why there's less union organizing is because of racism. Well, let's pretend that's true. It's I still a reality. That. You have to, okay, that's fine. But if you're an actual person that, in, in, that actually engages with material reality, and when you put two races together in a tightly closed space, um, every they don't get time. Along, Maybe you should live in reality instead of living in your fucking fantasy world. Well, the article so that he cited reality. did not must, support that argument. On. I've got uh, to he's be, saying it's because he doesn't him. get along with blacks. He can't imagine anyone else can. Proof. I've got oh, to get these you guys. Know what? I bet I know more black the, people than you That's what the study do. finds. You two I mean, together. Th that's what they find is that these diversity causes problems in unionizing. So, I no mean, more blacks than you do, next, Destiny. We, we must we must go to the next one. So sorry, folks. There are a lot of super chats we won't get to. Really, we tried to get through as many as we could. Dave Riley Media, last one says. Thanks for providing a platform for this debate. Thanks so much. Appreciate that. And thanks especially to the debaters. Hey, you the, need a thanks, I think. That's I'm nice thanking of you. you. But the, the, the debaters are the lifeblood of the channel. They make it fun. So we could not thank them enough. And so thanks, Dave. <laughs> then they asked, we need more discussion. Or they said, uh, why isn't anyone talking about Tony Martin's claim that Jews were overrepresented among slave owners in the U.S. and the slave trade? Because it's yeah, not true. I specifically not... looked at a debunk of this. That person was a fucking nutter. No, Jews are not overrepresented in the slave ownership. That was a country. black scholar that did that. It I don't. Black care. scholars can be nutters. What do you. Yeah, what the yeah, fuck? Only, do you... Are you only, saying only, only white only, people can only be crazy? Jewish and white liberal scholars are, are right. You sure, say... okay. Wait, are you saying only white people can be nutters? That's very anti white of you, my friend. No, no I would I'm, argue I'm everyone is that... capable of being a fucking I'm nutter. I'm saying that there's, there's institutional incentives. Listen, all, all sub and striker will mauled. I've gone over the data. It's complicated, the, but it's literally he, just dishonesty. Like, he okay. just lied in the White data. White people were also enslaved by Jews in the Ottoman Empire. <sighs> Operate out of South Africa. We have plenty of data oh on that. God, we're jumping all Jewish. over the place. Actually, fifteen hundred through nineteen hundred. Actually, a yes. white person was once brutalized by African men in six hundred twenty-three in the ten, ten, Roman ten, Empire. Any, anywhere from five to ten million slaves taken by the Ottomans there you go. Uh, along the Slavic What the fuck road. does that have to do with anything? I it's about the oppression of whites. Well, our, yeah, our, the thing is, is that the Ottoman Empire is like very closely tied to the current U.S. justice system in the United States, as can be seen. By ah, the, yes, yes, yes. The, the, the judges came well, over. They cite the Ottoman we Empire. We are discussing we're, we're slavery in this question. We're talking we're discussing about Jewish slavery. Rule and slavery. No, we weren't. We were talking about Jewish slavery with regards to the percentage they yes, made up of I American slavery. Yes, and I brought up that Jews slavery. also enslaved white people, which is 
in irre- Spain which and has the Ottoman nothing Empire. to do with the claim made. It's very relative. Yeah. It is literally nothing to do with the claim made. I will show you a pattern of I Jews internationally should, running the slave okay, trade from wait, the Dutch East Indies. To- I should not have read this question because it's really not about anything close to the debate topic. So that was my fault. Want to say, with that, we will wrap up. Want to say, folks, thanks so much for hanging out with us tonight. We really do hope you feel welcome. No matter what walk of life you come from, that's the purpose of this channel. We want to both give a platform to people from all walks of life, but also welcome the audience in terms of people from all walks of life. And so we are excited as Sargon will return. He'll be debating Brenton. That's early, sometime next week. And so hopefully we'll see you for that. Hit hit a subscribe, click, give me the old subscribe click if you want a reminder of that one, as that's going to be a good one. And so I want to say one last thanks so much to Destiny Bosch, Stryker, and also for being with us tonight. That was a wild one. <laughs> yeah, good time as really always. The other guys would have good prepared times. for the actual debate material, but yeah. this was a fun screening oh. match otherwise. My main, my main Ooh-hoo. problem is that it's infinitely easier, easier to discuss these issues, like absent uh, these perspectives. Uh, I have a feeling that people like Stryker and Alsup have no actual interest in um, examining any of these topics of discussion and are more interested in reciting their like stat okay. lists and their you virtue like, signal to arguments. other white liberals. All right. You got it. That, through. that as Thank I you. said, so that what You're he just said person, right there had Captain nothing America. to do with what You're I just said, person, but he America. has a very, well, it's like a NPC in a video game. He has a very yeah. small list of yeah. pre-recorded yeah. responses right. that he defers to when he's confused or upset, which is very, no, I mean, I mean, like, look, this is, I think this is a good synopsis, a good in- in- encapsulation of tonight's experience, which is a lot of snark, a lot of personal attack. Um, and, but but not a lot of willingness to discuss solutions. And so even if one were to concede, topic. even if this one is were to concede, white liberals are a problem. Their prob, their what their uh, supposition that there is widespread uh, bias in the criminal justice system against blacks, which is is debatable, of course. Uh, you then need to discuss what the solution to that would be. Right. Again, this is like standing by the side of your car on the highway if your tire is blown up, and then just standing there frozen, not being willing to discuss what <laughs> yeah. to do next. Like we can't change the tire. That's not. That's not uh, you know part of the discussion. No, isn't Destiny the one? So he's talking need... about. We need solutions. What about the solutions? How are you going to fix it? The problem is, it's right. like our tire has gone flat on the side of the road, and like three of like, the depending on the context. And one of you guys is like, well, actually, yeah. I think the engine fell out of the car, and yeah. you can't come to an agreement on what the problem right. even is. And you see, right you now, can see the engine right there in the bed, but they're like, the debate right now is what is wrong with the car, not how do we fix the problem with the car. You have to identify what the problem is first. Not capable of understanding the difference. I think the biggest mistake that me and Vash made is really funny because we had a conversation like two weeks ago where we're like in preparing for this because it's like this is like a pretty boring one-sided debate like there's like widespread consensus that black people face discrimination even when you control for all other factors and we were trying to think of like well what angle of attack are they going to go and i think that i think we generally agree that they were probably going to see the argument immediately and try to move to this culture argument which is like half true i wish we would have recorded that conversation so we could have released it alongside this debate to show how hilariously fucking predictable you two intellectually bankrupt dipshits are so you guys again are more snark and, you're saying we did yeah. over prepare i did over prepare that's yeah, on me that's my arguments fault. and uh you just refuse to interpret or engage with any of our data you just ignore it you snark and then you go back to repeating your own five or six talking points and that says the it. guy that's literally that's lo- reading off a fucking that's pdf about 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 fucking goldstein yeah, and whatever other Jewish bullshit right. you're bringing yeah. up right. yeah pdfs are cool when we do it but not when you do it stats are fine when we do we do studies studies are fine when we do it but not when you do it by the way, you're stupid. By the way, you're yeah. dumb. By the Actually, way, you're Actually, I'm going to say the you studies on both sides right now. I especially Show like me a study that Sunday follows Saturday. Oh, Show point. me a study that Washington, D.C. is the capital of America. Show me a study. Show me <laughs> yep. the data, blah, blah, blah. You can't, you can't you're just, find you're any You're offended first at the idea that's of why, like, backing that's up why, your That's why if we debate with black people, they will see that, and not have these dumb, pedantic, disingenuous I, little ways of <laughs> avoiding the actual issue. I'll see what you're here to do. You're here to avoid the issue and keep the pressure on whitey. I'll see my time after this. Because your virtue signaling to other white okay. people That's wait it. i'll see if i may because i defer again i'll see my time after this i just want to say you you two are at your best alone or with other people who agree with you because it is painfully obvious who actually has a better understanding of these issues when you come into conflict with people who disagree with you this is the reason why and i guarantee you this is going to happen you're going to be blocking a fuckload of people on social media afterwards who are going to be ribbing you for getting owned by a bunch of degenerate yeah. fucking liberal whatevers okay we don't now, have social I media i strongly we don't have social media suggest yeah, you I stick have, to your I own have, circles i have the only reason i'd block someone on social media is because people in the antifa sphere of things i.e your sphere uh will just uh, i thought i was a liberal me. yeah you are Antifa is a liberal organization at this <laughs> okay. point. You yeah. know what the Iron Front symbol means? One of them is anti-communism. You didn't know that? The three arrows? I don't even Look know. Look into it. 
Okay. Look into that. Yeah, you don't even know what that is. Sure. I don't, so the point wait, is what are you that, referring like, to? You, you guys have a little weird group of like 14-year-olds that watch people play video games on the internet. They're going to do whatever you say. But the point is that it doesn't mean you're right. Okay, we have the truth on our side, and that's why we want to your audiences that are make up the best of the genetic. Oh, yeah, this is the six-figure salary. Yeah. What? Uh, what are you, some kind of Nietzschean or something Chad. now, Destiny? We must what are you, some kind of survival of the fittest Nietzschean, Destiny? Because I doubt you'd win that one. I just think it's funny. We, we to let everybody go and uh, have the rest of their night. We will uh, we'll say goodbye. So thanks so much, folks. It's been a wild one, and also forgot to mention we are excited as. For the first time, Christy Winters will be here this Friday mm. debating feminism. That should be interesting. And then tomorrow, Erica and I will co-mod a debate on creationist genetics. So that should be interesting. And so with that, I want to say thanks to our guests, though. Always, it's always, uh, it's always a wild one. So thanks. They are linked in the description, folks, if you want to hear more. And keep sifting out the reasonable from the unreasonable. Take care, everybody. Thanks, guys. That was crazy. I love wow. you. I hope you know that, James. I love you. You're not paid enough for what you do. Uh, That's uh, nice yeah, of you. feel free to edit out some. I didn't mean uh, Coon in that context, obviously. It was in I a think specific I, context. Yeah, I, I didn't realize it until after I think you were trying to do the, yeah. you know, sometimes people, usually right. like uh, conservatives will say that. Racial you know, slurs. <laughs> True. <laughs> From time to time. I think. I think I get, well, I mean, at first I thought I was like pissed because I thought you were. No. But I think you were trying to say it kind of like, what's that? Candace Owens, she says right. that. Uncle Tom she's is the right. word he's looking for. Yes. She, right, right. That's how, that, that's what I was saying. Like, I that's have how said they Uncle Tom perceive Tom people, now. certain people that black people don't follow their ideology. And that's what I was meaning. Okay, well, listen, it's been fun. Um, both of you guys are dumb as fuck. I'm glad we wasted our time researching for this because holy right. shit, this was disappointing. So, Destiny, yeah. you were four foot two and a pedophile. So, yeah. Uh, so it's it like you're projecting quite a bit there, Hey, James. Mr. Hands. Whoa, I heard I'm Mr. Hands is on the Whoa. All right. The child molesters. The moralistic child molesters. All right. Good luck doing damage control tonight for the puppy, okay? All right. That went about as well as it could have. Oh, God. I overprepared for this so fucking hard. How hard can you overprepare? Here, I'm going to call Destiny real quick. We got to do the post. Uh. Oh, well, that was dumber than <laughs> even I thought it would be. No, I think it was about the level I thought it would be. No, I, I think it was a little dumber than I thought it was. It was a little worse than I expected. We did. I over. I at least overprepared. I don't know. I was I was. I thought at least they God. were going to try to like have like some like bad study or some bad instead of literally just like, oh, well, here's the crime stats. Black people do commit more crime. It's like, 1350. Okay. It's not really what we're at park. Yeah. No, Holy I appreciate I appreciate you uh, signing up for the 2v2 with me. Uh, Enoch was very smart to not involve himself in this, I think. Yeah. I wonder if, um, I don't like to talk about it a lot just because it's boring, but I, sometimes I sincerely wonder if people don't understand the difference between like one or two numbers versus like an actual study that contextualizes data. Like the idea that you could just cite like two numbers and say, oh, well, here's like a causal inference. Like, oh, dude, you just solved like 99% of the hard work in all of like academia. Congratulations. Like you're so smart. Like, I don't know. It's so fucking stupid. Well, in a really relativist way, it makes sense, right? To hold the positions that we do are like liberal or socialist positions. We generally have to base it off like data analysis, but to believe the things they have to believe, they have to not understand data analysis. So, I mean, it kind of makes sense, right? Like, oh, otherwise I guess it they logically couldn't... follows and that those types of people would sort themselves into those baskets, yeah. Yeah, or vice versa. Yeah, actually, I guess that's true because, like, my core values, I don't think have changed much over the past 10 years. It's usually just been, like, more data collecting is kind of, like, led me to the position I'm at today. It's not like I had some massive awakening where it's like, oh, all of a sudden I love women and I love black people. But it's more just like, I've always felt that way. I just had, like, bad data, I guess, early on in my life. And you just collect more, you read more, and eventually you get to some position, I guess. But... Do, you, do you enjoy debating these Nazi types? Because I find that I'm getting really, really bored of them. Um, I, it's kind of fun, but the only problem is that when you do a two on two, I want to scream over everybody and I have to be careful not to scream over you sometimes. Yeah, oh yeah. I'm, <laughs> sometimes so, I'm sorry like, if I talked to you, by the way, I get, listen, I was just, yeah, no, was fine. <laughs> but, uh, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, in some ways it's kind of funny. I think that at the end of the day, the biggest like defeat for these types of people is you don't want to look bad. Um, people don't care if they're right or wrong. People don't care if they're racist or not racist, especially these guys. You just don't want to look like you're stupid. Um, and like, I think there are a couple of times where I, I hope that we can like demonstrate, like these guys like look really dumb because some, people don't care if they feel like you're calling them racist. 
racist. They don't care if they feel like, you know, they might disagree with some academia bullshit, but nobody wants to feel stupid at the end of the day. And you identify with the content creators that you watch. And if you feel like your guy has been like made to look like an idiot, then you kind of feel like an idiot. And I found that at least in the emails that I get, that's usually what causes people to kind of like move positions. It's like, oh, well, I watched this guy and I don't know, man, when he talked to you, he looked really stupid. And I don't know, maybe it's feel uncomfortable. So. with them. That's all mm -hmm. it is. That's all they do. It's all they know. Uh, when they, because right now there are probably yeah. yeah hundreds of people on poll that are like cope posting right now, and the people who mm -hmm. like think that we lost are be screaming about how we're pedophile faggots, and the people who think that we won are talking about how like striker looked like a retard or whatever. But that's it. That's yeah. like the entire. That's the limit of the discussion from like beginning to well, end. Well, I think. You know? I hate to reveal like what like the type of material I like to read one because it makes my dumbass fans post more and then two it might dissuade somebody else from it but usually when you go on to like especially reading the poll boards the politics boards after this is that usually what you find is you won't usually find praise for your end but you'll find a bunch of people that start posting like fuck like Alsip was like a huge moron in this debate yeah. why didn't he prepare like these guys acted like dipshits like oh god like they're a bad representation paid up so those are usually because they're never going to say nice things about you but it's funny when they start ragging on their own dudes because <laughs> they realize how horrible the fucking showing was that's step that's one really right funny. I mean and then hopefully a couple of them move over because i do really feel bad for whoever person i mean whose thought processes are degenerate enough that they can watch that and think like yeah dude striker was owning it damn that's fuck those yeah, liberals right. <laughs> well, yeah. liberal anarchists into whatever way uh, i don't i don't defend they didn't the try to pin my ideology on but you had like six different ones in that debate I know, I, I, well, yeah. very fluid well, listen, hey, I bristle when I'm called a liberal, okay? I um, I try not to defend the anarchist positions that much anymore. I, I don't think there's much material benefit to be had from, like, throwing forward the most aggressively radical arguments first. You kind of have to build them up to that, right? Like, if you get people on the idea that, that uh, w you know, uh, wage labor is, is, is in some way, shape, or form theft, like, you can build them up past that point. But you have to start mm -hmm. there. You can't open with the really far shit. Yeah. Well, yeah. All right. Anyway, well, hey, buddy, I appreciate the conversation. Yeah. Um, a yeah. brief once a year departure from Twitch because I will never be allowed back on that platform. Uh, anyway, have a wonderful stream and night, and thank you again. Be careful. I can't wait to fight with you over some class reductionalism yeah. shit in the future. I yeah, am have fun. Hey, I'm very anti class. Yeah. Have you seen? Wait, are you <laughs> know, but... Rising, by the way, with with Crystal Ball and and Sagar? Oh, God. I've heard. I tried to look into a few things. It looks so fucking horrible. Ooh, just, it's really, even... really bad. They're legit just scooping up like burnt out like Bernie supporters and trying to push yeah. them into the far right. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Anyway, good luck. Yeah, man. I mean, populism is a hell of a drug. You can go left to right with that. That's right true. Be well. All right. Have fun. Bye. Cool. All right. How'd that go? I think that went pretty well. How well did that go? Let me think. <clears throat> Hold on. They're asking me to post ooh. There. I have posted ooh. Now they, now they know. Um, okay. There we go. I think that went, uh, I think that went pretty well. I think I, I think I responded to that about as well as possible. Yeah. We hit 12,000. Uh, viewers there, 12,000 viewers, which was about what Destiny got, but of course I stream on YouTube, uh, and he doesn't, so I'm going to have a home field advantage there. Um, that's, uh, that's easily a record. That's easily a record. Like, that's not even close to not being a record. Um, yeah. Okay. That was my, whew. And you know what? I want to make it official right now. And right now, with all the people who are watching, you know, I want to make this very well known. Still over 10,000, okay? I am so done debating Nazis. I'm so bored. I'm so fucking bored of debating Nazis. It's so bored. Every single time, every time, they do not respond to the things that are said. They don't engage. They just have their little script about every, no matter what you say to them, it's always the same. Well, I think it's funny, you can say that, but when you really look at it, white people are actually under attack, our civilization is crumbling. Like every single time, it is the same uh, disconnected, um, yeah, 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 live post. Oh, hey, live post, and yeah, uh, uh, Sartre, yeah, anti semite the Jew. Um, it, it's the same thing every time, it's really, really boring. And I understand that there are some fantastic, like blood sports moments to be had, you know? within regards with the debates with Nazis, but I'm just bored, honestly. I I would rather debate like MAGA hats and conservatives. I'd rather debate TikTok conservatives. I'd rather debate Democrat like moderate liberals. I'd rather debate dumbfuck MGTOW types. On, I'd rather debate anyone than these, 
these these lunatic, completely divorced from reality, they sneer at the concept of backing up their arguments, you know? Um Yeah, it's just it's just really boring for me. So I'm going to try to move away. Um I'm just gonna I'm gonna try to move away from that, I think. And and I think the channel will be stronger for it, frankly. Would you rather debate vegans? Vegans are still one tier below. The Nazis, okay? No, 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 no. All right. <laughs> anyway, um, oh yeah, Hyena posted, Hyena posted some memes. <laughs> All right. You fucking D-Gens. Oh, hey, Cedosia. Hey, it's me! Yeah, we got the, for a brief moment, for a brief glorious moment, we got it, baby.